right? No, left. Correct? Upward, downward. We're trying to do math right now, right? Yes. <laughs> yes. I, we better stick to something creative. Yes. That's... That's my message. Well, uh, uh, this is episode number 58 of Lucha World. Frito and the Freak are back. And I think we're on some sort of odd roll of, of Th- semi-consistency. Three shows you know? three shows in a row within a two-week span of every show, right? Yeah. Every two weeks we've been going. It's giving me a bit of an identity crisis because uh, I'm watching... Uh, a wrestling show fairly regularly now. We're the most regular, irregular lucha podcast. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I am in a unless you, unless you count like lucha underground podcast, but I, I'm not. I think there might be one or two. I'm not sure. I don't know. I I'm oblivious. Yeah, I'm oblivious. Well, you don't watch the lucha underground. So. No, I I'm oblivious to almost everything uh, wrestling wise. These Kurt, days. Kurt is on episode six of Lucha Underground season one, right? <laughs> Um, I am on an episode one of season number two, and I didn't finish season number one. So uh, I, yeah, I, I await episode number Lucha World podcast episode eighty six when you finally realize when you finally do a, a, a recap of everything you've watched of Lucha Underground and how great it is. You're like, oh my I god, I am so great. straying blissfully yeah. into the past. I still am obsessed with. You that could newspaper. you could do the between the sheets. <laughs> A between, a between uh, the sheets uh, version of a, a lucha underground because yes, you're, you're uh, taking so no, long. No, no, it's very odd because, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm I'm kind of fascinated by wrestling history these days. I'm watching a lot. It's weird. I'm watching a lot less wrestling than I did years ago. Yet I'm watching something consistently. Where, you know, my tag for the longest time was I haven't been watching much of anything except for a match here and there. Yeah. Um, well, well, that's nowadays. That's the way to watch CML and AAA. Just watch a match here and there. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's like you don't want to watch a full show just because there's so much crap on it. Very true. And it's like a two hour thirty minutes yeah. of. And and my other in my other inconsistency, which is just getting more out of control, is I want to apologize to so many people who I have not returned uh, text or. You're still not answering emails and text. Yeah, I and that's that's I your that's to, your one role in this podcast. I know. I especially want to say hello and give a salutation to our friend Scotty Astro, who has sent me several Facebook messages, and I keep meaning to get back to him, and I have not yet. And uh, I, I hope he doesn't think that they haven't figured out that I answer them quickly. <laughs> <laughs> you had to go and say that. Yes, I, I know. Mailing you, lucky. Well, for I, I'm a lot. I'm. I'm. I'm a little more consistent on Twitter than anything else. Yeah, it's funny. You're you're a Twitter guy. I'm a Facebook yeah. guy. Yeah, Twitter. I, if you ask me a question on Twitter, I answer it right away. Yeah, I I like Twitter, but I definitely uh, Facebook is more my Twitter yeah. has to say. Uh, and aside from the Scotty Astro, uh, hello, I you know just want to mention something not totally lucha, but been on Facebook looking at uh, our pals Joey Chaos and Sylvia Chaos the Chaos couple Sylvia Chaos adorable couple who are are just touring everywhere right now they're in Europe right, right now uh, Amsterdam too. wow I think they're going that is in Europe is, you know <laughs> <laughs> you know when you were saying Europe what I was thinking was England yeah uh, they're they're going everywhere with this uh uh what is it? What are they doing? It's part of a tour called uh, Lucifer. Uh, let me look what it's called. <laughs> I keep forgetting. Lucha for Lunatics. No? That's us. That's us. Maybe they'll. Vi- have they visited Diamante Azul in France? I do. <laughs> <laughs> Although he's, he's in Mexico. I should again. ask them. I should ask them if. Uh, well, if he's in Mexico now, so they missed them. I'm going to ask them anyway. <laughs> I'm going to say, have you seen the Blue Diamond? And as I. <laughs> And you can hear some buzzing, you folks. That's because I have my uh, cell phone really, really, really... Oh, is that... You're doing that? That's what Meltzer does all the time. Oh, that's what... I was always wondering what did that. Yeah. So so as I look totally amateurs here trying, for, trying to that's say... That's probably like the worst thing you what did. The, what, 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 the, what the heck are these kids doing this Lucifer, Lucifer, I... Uh, Hurry up. Come on. The heck. 
No, anyways. If you can't remember, let's just go on. Yeah. Because <laughs> you're going to mess up the no, audio. I already messed it up. No, well, what I want to say is... This is like the only... This is like the one podcast where I don't want the audio to be messed up. <laughs> <laughs> All the other shows, it's like, I always hear like these weird noises. Well, you can edit, edit out my uh, stammering. So I think yeah. it's called Lucifer and Pucifer. Lucifer what? Lucifer and Pucifer. It's a funky... Uh, I think it's a part concert, part wrestling. Oh, it's that group um, with the guy who used to um, sing for, play for Tool, wasn't it? I have no idea. Mm. But I am jazzed for that. Somebody's going to send us a message, tell us, tell us correct us. <laughs> I hope somebody does. I would like to be informed. I don't want to go Google. Yeah, I think life. it is. I think it. I think no, that no, is. I, 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 what I want to say is, I I am just jazzed. I remember when I, uh, you know, worked with both Joey and Lester and. Their friends, uh, Joey and Lester, Joey Chaos and Supreme. Yes, yes. And, From XPW. Then Rob Courtney. Kurt and, name dropping already, man. It's not even. It's not even fifteen minutes into the podcast that you're name dropping all the people you were wrestled and knew from XPW. Oh, behave yourself, Fredo. <laughs> behave yourself. <laughs> no, no, but it's it's funny because I remember uh, that kind of crew that worked on uh, the Johnny Legend shows then. Yeah, it was uh, the two of them, and then Rob Courtney and uh, uh, the late Byron Walker, who was Tech Nine, and you know it was really it was really fun because I saw like these really just eager kids, and you know saw their enthusiasm. Some of their ECW ness used to drive me a little crazy at times, <laughs> but uh, you know I thought, oh, this is really cool. These kids are going to have a fun couple of years, and then you know go on to whatever else they go on to. But I have to say, I really, uh, you know, they all did what they wanted to do, but Joey really took the ball and went further. And, you know, on the Santino Brothers shows I saw a few years ago that he promoted, I really loved how he had a good understanding of a traditional wrestling show and at the same time thinking outside the box uh, also including other styles like Lucha Libre. Yeah. You know, Kayam would frequently be on those shows. And, yeah, I don't know, he's, he's somebody who, you know, and yeah, I should, I should include his wife on this too. She's every bit as you know, much a part of the promotion and Mongol Santino, I assume, too. Uh, but it's really cool to see somebody who is just just totally experimenting trying different things you know understanding traditional wrestling and uh just want to say how jazzed i am for them yeah i'm on facebook seeing all their vacation well working vacation yeah and i'm just really happy when somebody who's worked their butts off and used their imagination are getting something out of it and you know I, I doubt they're getting filthy wealthy off it, but I think they're having a really fun yeah, they're time. Yeah, while they're in Europe right now, so. Bitching. Doing what they love, wrestling. Absolutely. <laughs> Doing I the mean, lucha and pro wrestling thing. No, because it, it always trips me out. I know everybody's goal is to make it to WWE, but I don't know. So, sometimes it seems like you, can have, you, you won't have as prolific or as uh, wealthy a career, but... Yeah, much more interesting for it seems. Like. I mean, there's guys who make it to WWE and then like get out mm-hmm. and end up. But you know, it's weird. Like you see some guys who do that and they still continue on. But then you have like a le- like tons of guys who you never hear about again, like in wrestling. Absolutely, like, absolutely. You just don't and, and never now hear about them. More hear than ever. Them. Now more than ever, you hear about people who just go into the business with just this blazing enthusiasm and. Uh, they're either too injured or get burnt out after yeah. seven or eight years. Uh, of course, there's a lot of people, a lot less people trying to get into the business when I was younger. Yeah, you know, but I see, I, I saw more people who you know had something going, hanging on a lot more, or actually making a career out yeah. of it. It's you know. So, so anyway, just 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 wanted to say that. Um, 
Kurt's ready to talk about La Mascara and Pierrot. Let's get to the, the, the fun stuff. La Mascara and Pierrot. I was feeling so good. Too. I was feeling so happy for... I know you want to... I was feeling You're so going to be watching that big matchup on Friday. For the, our Southern California La Mascara natives. versus Pierrot. La Mascara oh is here God. tonight. I don't know if you knew that. We're taping this on Thursday. La Mascara is here wrestling in Los Angeles. No way. For Lucha Vaboom. Oh. I, li- I like how... Um, it was funny because um, Lucha Blog... I don't know what it, how this came about, but on Twitter he made a comment on. Um, he was talking about Mascara Dorada, mm-hmm. and so Lucha Vaboom said said I don't know what it was about. I think he just made a post or something, and Lucha Vaboom wrote, "We're bringing it, we're bringing uh, Mascara for this show on to what that's happening tonight." Yes, and uh, and so I I, I tell uh, Lucha Blog I go I go. They do realize you were talking about Mascara Dorada, right? And he's like, I don't think they, they I don't think they do. And I was like, because like, there's like a big difference. I mean, Huge difference. For, 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 for maybe Lucha Baboon fans, La Mascara would be fine because he does the stripper thing. and Oh, yeah. That, you know, limited wrestling, it's enough for the casual it's fans. It's a place with an uh, alcohol license. Yeah, fans casual, offer. Fa- casual yeah, fans. That's fine. But that's like, fine. for hardcore fans, it's like, there's a big difference between La Mascara and Mascara Dorada. Mascara Dorada is great. La Mascara is just pretty generic. Oh, hell yeah. It's like, yeah. It's, it's like, you know, generic, it's you know, like, generic soda and then Coca-Cola. It's like going to go, difference. it's like yes. going to go see the, one of those great rock bands mm-hmm. or going to go see like the local band in your, <laughs> in your neighborhood, you know, unless it's really good local band stuff. So. Yeah. So yeah, uh, I know you're excited about that La Mascara Pure Oath match. I am so excited. I'm. I, I need something to be yes. anxious and upset about. So yeah, you told uh, me you were going to take the day off tomorrow to prepare to watch that, right? Yeah, I got to get psyched up. <laughs> yeah, you got to you know, go. I, I'm, I'm going to go to. The and then your internet crashes and you'll be depressed. And, and uh, well, no, that would be a good thing. Then, then, <laughs> yeah, then I, you'd have to watch. Then that. I could imagine it being a good. Match. Yes. I could imagine being good wrestler. Did you ever? Well, you know, it's weird because. These bad matches happen all the time in wrestling, so it's not it's not uncommon. But it's like you watch to this this last year with so much CML on, online, mm-hmm. and do you see all the talent they have? But they come up with like the worst matches. <laughs> like the last couple of weeks, they've come up with like some really weird matches, like La Mosca and Pearl probably being the main one. But it's like CMLL is just such a puzzling promotion. I mean, they're the longest existing promotion. You know, they'll have these. You know, little waves of brilliance followed by this mediocrity. Yeah, but it's like, like it's like a six month period where there's nothing going on. Then suddenly there's like, we're gonna give you guys this match, and it's like, whoa, this is really good. And then it's like six weeks worth of really good matches, maybe mm-hmm. on on certain shows. And then it just dries out, and it's like, oh, we're back to Pure yes. versus La Mascara. And you know, I, I'll say they had that trios match the, on the twentieth, I think, where it was. Um, La Mascara break when it was Rush versus La Mascara, the trio. La Mascara and Rush were really good. Mm-hmm. Their matchup was good. <laughs> then you had Pierrot versus somebody <laughs> else. I think Shocker might have been in that match. <clears throat> and it was like this really bad, like you're just watching like, the, it's like good wrestling and bad wrestling in one match. It's just like oh, really geez. awkward. It was really, yeah. it, was, it, it ended up falling <laughs> in the middle, but it was, you just and that's what you get with CML. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. So you talk about Puebla. Puebla. I, know, I, I, know I you... still have Puebla fever. Yeah. Now. Uh, I've lost Puebla fever. That this okay. <laughs> this has got to be groundbreaking because I actually watched most of a show that you did not watch. Yeah. I think it's always because I have common sense. <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> I was gonna say uh, you're usually yeah. the one who watches yes. all the crap while I sit there nodding, saying, "Tell me." I more. think I watched they the don't tell me more. I, well, I was watching the basketball game. Yeah, oh, that's good. Yeah. That was game yeah. seven. Game seven, night, right? yeah, yeah. The one where the Golden State Warriors pulled it off. Yeah. Who are you going for in the NBA Finals? Whichever one wins. <laughs> Basketball expert Kurt yeah, Brown. I, I'm going I'm to wait until uh, one team fun. wins and I'm going to buy is. their jersey. And then you're like, I'm happy for them. Yes. I'm going to buy that jersey, wear it, I'll burn the other jersey. Yeah, and I'm going to wear it to work and where I know somebody will say, jumping on the bandwagon, huh? And I'll go, <laughs> yeah. I yep. am the bandwagon. <laughs> Jump on me, baby. Yeah. Back to Puebla. Uh, back to Puebla. Uh, uh, I caught this past Monday's show and... The entire thing? No, I cheated. <laughs> Skip the first couple matches. Um, you were smart. I actually watched... The women's match. <laughs> was there a women's match? There was a women's match, and I did not get through the whole thing. 
That bad? It was pretty bad. <laughs> six woman tag. Yeah. It, there's always a difference if it's a six woman tag. Yeah. Like, when Trios. It, it seems like when there's a singles match, uh, even if the match isn't good, they it's a little more. You know, it's going to end. Yeah, and you know, it's going to end soon. <laughs> <laughs> but it, but it, but it doesn't fall apart. It yeah. usually doesn't fall apart. Now, uh, well, first let me get to the uh, yeah. Go ahead. Opening match. Uh, you know, some of the Pueblo guys, it was Black Tiger and this guy, and this name, I want to know the story behind this name, Meyer. <laughs> Meyer? <laughs> or as they say... Mayer. Mayer, yeah. yeah. M-E-Y-E-R. I want to know the story behind the name. Uh, they wrestled Fuerza Chicana and Ares. Ares, yeah. Now, one, as happens sometimes on those quick that was really bad wasn't it <laughs> it actually was not bad oh no if it would have been even better if Fuerza Chicano was not in it <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah he wore the red white and blue and I don't think the Chicanos would be too jazzed um, no. uh, he wasn't terrible but isn't it weird that Chicano Chicana is supposedly s- s- the last couple like some of the characters I think Fuerza Chicana and who was the one that was in um, the Gringos Locos I can't remember his name. He said something. Chic- I can't remember his name, but he was in he was in Triple A or something. Oh, I remember. Oh, Chicano Power. Chicano Power. Oh, oh I, in fact, I remember when I first started buying Lucha magazines in 1972. That's when the original Chicano Power was around. Yeah, but I mean, red, red, white, and blue. I mean, what is? I understand Chicanos are like that would be offensive to the Chicanos here. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah. It, it's that, one of those weird. Funny. It's one of those weird things. Maybe where it's like a blue demon. Thing I'm guessing over there. Place. I think because I, I'm sure it probably is. Where, even though we're his Mexican descent, mm-hmm. we're Chicanos over there, and we're like, ah, oh, we're not. We're, we probably they probably think we think we're better, better than them or something. Right. It wasn't. I, somebody told me originally Chicano was nothing but a negative term. It was like a, yeah, it probably was. Yeah. But I, I remember the kids at my school, the the uh, kids who were families were from Mexico. Oh my God! Even if they weren't into wrestling, they wanted to see the Lucha Libre match just to see Chicano power. <laughs> They're like, "This is our guy." Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, they. I, I think one of them even like, even like a, like put, it. put a photo up on the wall somewhere. <laughs> That's just, awesome. I thought that was so cool. Yeah. So anyway. Uh, you know, these are a couple of Pueblo guys. Ares, okay, this is cool. The audio was messed up as it often is in Pueblo. Oh, it was? But I could hear faintly Ares' uh, theme song. Oh, they always lower the volume on the theme. Oh, do the they music. really? Yeah, I, think, I thought they just messed up. I think they're doing that for um, the YouTube shows. It was... For uh, copyright reasons. Led Zeppelin's Immigrant Song. Yeah. That Bruiser Brody went out yeah. to. And I just cried. And you got the same reaction, right? <laughs> yeah, I would. He got the were the people running away from him. <laughs> oh, absolutely! No. He's barking, you know, because he's 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 not as tall as Bruce Brody, yeah. but just as intimidating. Yeah, so he started barking, running through the crowd. <laughs> no, no, he, running he, through the seats. You mean? <laughs> <laughs> running. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> uh, no, he found what crowd was there and ran through. Yeah, them yeah. And tried to bunch them all up. Yeah. No, he just he just went to the ring just so so, and I'm just thinking, oh, what a trip though. How happy are you that the Edicanes are now part of Puebla? I'm. <laughs> You're like you don't really care. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> I am. I am very happy about that. Yeah. So anyway, a tag team match. This guy Meyer is a really solid worker. Mm-hmm. Really good. Uh, good enough that I actually went on Lucha Wiki to see. And all it says is Meyer. Well, the cool thing is, remember we were talking about that guy, uh, was it, it, Did it just say Meyer and that was it? <laughs> Almost, a, a but they said his relatives. Oh, okay. His uncle is that guy we're talking about with es- Espiritu Maligno? Or? Espiritu Maligno? That's his yeah. uncle. The way, remember how I was talking about that? was one guy I really dug last yeah. time. Uh, He's good. No, but this was a nice, solid opener for such a kind of, you know... So. Bit of a buzz kill. Yeah, he wasn't. He's great. been really bad, like on the shows. Yeah, but nice opener. Then we went to uh, uh, the women's match. Was that the second match? The second match, yes. Wow. Yeah, Yuvia. I thought it was the third match. Yuvia Sugihi Vakarita against Comandante Tiffany Zutsis. And it had Zutsis and Princessa Suhi and 
vaquerita, which you would think that would be enough to like make the match a little bit better. <laughs> Yeah, but then who's in yeah. it? Tif- you said Tiffany was in it? Uh, Tiffany was in and it. And Commandante, who's Comandante. really bad. And um, Yuvia is awful. Uh, Yuvia is terrible. I like looking at her. Yeah. I, I think she's cute. I like her um, her selfies on Twitter. <laughs> she has selfies on Twitter? She always posts. But it's her with the, the camera on her, in, her fa- in front of her face. Oh, okay. But, I mean, she's showing you everything else, practically. <laughs> okay. But she's yeah. dressed. She's dressed, though. Yeah. Oh, damn. <laughs> no, she is. She is. I, I, I think she's really cute. But she, yeah, no, the, they. Well, but then you're like, I can't believe she's talking about Chicano's daughter. She sucks. It's, it's weird. Yeah, it, it's like I've said before. You, if I was gonna say what the women's and Vaquerita isn't good enough to like really like if the match is bad. No, she, she needs to be carried. As yeah, you know, in this match, and none of those girls carries people. Zuxis isn't somebody that really. I don't think she's like at that level where she can carry. No, people. and the funny thing is, really long good, as Zuxis was in the ring, things was... seemed to hold together. Yeah, because she's really good. Yeah, she's really good, but uh, and Suhei kind of mails in a lot of stuff sometimes too. Princess. That was my impression. I wasn't sure. Uh, yeah, and Yuvia, like you said, is really green. And Vakarita, like I said, it looks like she tries, but yeah. she really has to be carried. And Comandante just has a cool presence, but... She's bad. <laughs> yeah. Her and Tiffany are just really bad. Yeah, they, if, if there was a role for managers in there... Uh, well, that's what her role should be, great. but she's it like... It should just be yeah. a man. Yeah, it just fell apart fast. I And I cheated. I didn't watch the whole thing. <laughs> I, 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 I didn't watch it live. And what's amazing is I watched it you're last like, night. You're like, dear God, I can fast forward. <laughs> <laughs> I, I watched it most of it last night... Uh, after having only one hour sleep the night before, uh, so I was amazed I actually got through as much as I, I did. And what I got through, uh, was I, I saw, <laughs> I saw Astral in the title defense oh, uh, against Tyrone. How was that? That was good. It was a good run. It was a good like run. You know, uh, run of the mill title defense. Because uh, I saw their singles match before that. The I think it was the match for and it was really mm-hmm. bad. So I was like, I ain't gonna watch this. Was it was pretty good. I'm not gonna watch this. I mean, this it's, crap. it's nothing I'd write home about. Yeah, because I, I think I wrote, I wrote, I saw like less than ten minutes of this. Why would I want to watch Three Falls? <laughs> so I was like, I ain't gonna watch this. No, they did good. They did good. Yeah. It was nothing spectacular. You know, it was it was a routine title fence type of thing. Why don't they have a spirit to Maligno Russell the midget? You know, like <laughs> he's you, almost as tall as them. Why not have him? He's better. Now, now here's another thing I have to ask. They don't have a lot of creativity in Sailor They don't, and here's the weird thing about the whole minis these, in general. They're not even minis. They're not minis. That dude's like probably Drop like a... Drop the mini thing, goddammit. I think Estrell's probably as tall as like that dude we saw, Stuka, that, that other Stuka that we saw at, um, at oh, the Legend Oh, Angel Show. Star. Yeah, Angel Star. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it just baffles me that... Astral looks really cool. He has that. He's ripped. He's like that he's, thin, yeah, that ripped, juiced up body. Yeah, he's really he's colorful in a super Astro or Rey Mysterio Junior type of way. I mean, does he fly moves and has this unique yeah. look to him? He looks like and they call him. He looks quick. like a little strong man, but able to do dives and stuff. You know, exactly, exactly. It, but they have. I don't to think say, he's that good though. Mini Pequeño. Oh, he's not this super well-rounded wrestler, but he has yeah. that same kind of uh, air to him. Like. Yeah. I mean, he is... I dig him. I really like him. You just like juiced up guys, that's why. Oh, yeah, you know how much I like steroids. <laughs> yeah, you're, you're just strong man was your favorite, not nah, Astral. Yeah, he, he, he's an exception. <laughs> strong man is an amazing exception. Yes. I usually cannot stand the sight of somebody that juiced up, mm-hmm. no matter what walk of life they're in. Astral looks like he's just like waking up and it's like... Piling in those, whatever you need to get oh, that body. Oh, I know. Let, yeah, <laughs> let, let me pop a few pills, inject yeah. a few uh, needles, and yeah. boom, I'm ready to go. No, but, but I, he, I think you know, I think he's refreshing. He's he sticks out. I mm-hmm. mean, which is something all of wrestling needs badly these days. Somebody who has like an individual air to them. Uh, and yeah, I hate that they call them minis, but oh, there there was one spot where. Saron did like the corkscrew plancha, mm. uh, or the tope over the ropes. He barely made it over, and it <laughs> looked good. But as he was going over, You're like, like ten step, like <laughs> he's I gave, gonna die. Yeah, I gave him an A for effort. He is yeah. Saron is 
he probably I, he, they, they're not he's they're not particularly the best of Puebla's locals. <laughs> no, you no. Know? And he said he strikes me as the type of guy who could be good, but he isn't inspired. Mm. You know, that's my hunch. <laughs> It's possible because I mean he's a really because there's some guys who are just in, like they, they're, it's not that they don't like wrestling it's just that they're not as motivated and yeah because he looked like he was a really good base for Astral yeah he, he looked like he 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 struck me as somebody who understands how to work but that's how the min, like it. that's how the minis division is right now it's like just a lot of guys who are okay but nobody really yeah. stands out there's no Mascarita Dorada I, 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 although Shocker Cito Shocker Cito and Stukita are really good mm-hmm, yes. I mean they're wrestling guys who aren't really that. You know, or they're teaming with guys who aren't at that level. Yes. So it doesn't come off right. And Stuka, Stukita shouldn't be a mini, man. He's just short. No, no. He, that, 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 guy, that guy should be like wrestling a Hechicero and getting sure. caught in that move on <laughs> spinning around. Yes. He should be the yes, guy spinning yes. around like every match. Just have him come in and just beat him up. Oh, it's like that movie. Uh, remember that movie De Sangre Chicana that was actually filmed here in L.A. with Coloso Colosetti in it? Yeah. Uh, there's there's one scene where he he's winning a battle royal, and I think the last guy he defeats is this little guy, much smaller than him, and he puts him in a sleeper hold and spins him around like the yeah, like Ken Katara spinning uh, full nail. Yeah, and it's like they don't do they don't come up with this. They they get upset because they're too short or they're. Well, they're yeah, I remember Rosado Ruiz was like what like a lightweight. I think it was a. Like Stukita size, yeah, and 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 he was like so. I mean, it's respected. different. Shocker Cito is a mini. That dude yeah. is a mini. Yeah, Pierotito is a mini. They are actually short. Like they're shorter than short. Oh so yeah. So it's like those guys make sense, but then like these other guys, it's like they're not short. That's like they yeah they're short, but they're not that short. Yeah. Now my, my biggest complaint about this show was, I don't know if the cameraman had not eaten in some time. Probably. <laughs> it's a long trip to Puebla. Yeah, but he kept on doing close-ups of fans eating tortoise <laughs> over and over. I saw, I saw one, and I was like, yes. And then when I saw, because they did it very early in the show, and when I saw, it, I was like, oh, I'm gonna turn it off now. <laughs> yeah, and, so, and and once it was even like this attractive woman, and she's but, got a torta. Yes, yeah, she, she doesn't look so attractive if she's chewing into a torta. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Casas and Caristico against Mephisto and Mascara Dorado. You skipped the other matches? I skipped the, yeah, the six okay. man, the other six man. Yeah, that's Just fine. Just didn't have time. That's um, fine. That's me sipping water. I'm too fascinated. <laughs> um, you know, people are, all, what is what is that noise? It's Kurt drinking water. That's right. I, I'm, I'm just trying to show how low rent we are. Yeah. You know. Uh Negro Casas and Caristico against Mephisto and Mosca Redorada. Uh Things went... Was it short, as usual? Because they always Not have, as short as I thought it was. Because the, be. the main events are always short for some reason. Like yeah, this minutes. was definitely... This was... This was not like the Rush versus Marco Corleone. Yeah, where it was like, let's brawl over the place and leave. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I, I, I pictured like a helicopter outside waiting. Yes, for yes. I never saw two guys so eager to get out of a building. But no, these guys actually put into it. But I thought the match was doomed because early in the first fall, Moscow Dorada is thrown into the turnbuckle buckle and just kind of his legs buckle and he collapses onto the, uh-huh. at the turnbuckle and he's holding his knee. And, uh, you know, there's a moment of confusion, but Negro Casas, you know, being who he is, you know, goes off on Mephisto and then immediately puts him in the Scorpion Deathlock. Then Carisco, it's, it's clear that Mosquera is hurting. And so if you're Carisco... How would you finish off Mascara Dorada? The figure for Laylark? <laughs> Just kidding. Almost as bad. <laughs> what Boston you... Crab. Oh, jeez. Why not put, like, a, a chicken wing on him? Yeah, or, or just, like, pin him. <laughs> and I just thought, what? Unless, unless he has the ability to put that Boston Crab incredibly, incredibly light. Yeah. I just thought, what are you thinking? And... Because if he's hurt from the knee, you could probably just pin him right there, I mean. Yeah. Yeah. Af- and then after... Uh, that fall, Casas was great as always. What Casas does is he he starts brawling with Mosker and just kind of sends him out into the stands. Yeah. So he can take a rest. And in a moment that 
almost could have turned Mephisto total, total, total babyface. Both Caristico and Casas are just double teaming him and just just bullying him around. Uh-huh. And I'm saying, if this was Marina Mexico, they just. But isn't it weird how they the previous show it was Carist it was Mascara Dorada and Mephisto well, as the as the as the Rudos. I didn't they see were the, the show. they were the yeah. guys who were being the Rudos with Casas and Caristico, and this time around, as you're saying, it was the other way around. Oh, okay, okay, I didn't realize. Yeah, that. so it's, it's, oh. it's, but see that's that's the that's the stuff that's really wrong. What's mm-hmm. so weird with CML that they don't really, nobody really has any, because nobody watches, nobody in CML watches their shows, so it's like, what that's they serious, don't really know what's going which on. Is silly. If they were watching, dude, if if they were watching that Informa show. They would be taking notes. All these wrestlers have come up with really good ideas for matches and stuff. None of them have happened. I don't That's think there has been a single match. I should just go through every Informa <laughs> where they talk about matches they'd like to see, and you don't really get them. It's amazing, and especially considering... Astral was on the show. He said, he's like, I would like to face Virus, mm-hmm. Nero Casas, and Dragon Lee. And I thought, that guy actually wouldn't have... Like, Astral may not be like the... Like you were saying, he's not the greatest wrestler... But I think he could get. I think Virus could get a good match out of him. Oh, easily. I, I think Nero Casas could get a good match. Can you match imagine what Casas could do with Especially him? because you're doing the whole. Oh, he's a midget. Now he's he's yeah. an underdog going against a, a heavyweight. Although Virus is the furthest thing from a heavyweight. Yeah, Casas could make a mediocre wrestler look good. I, I think he could. Uh, he made Alhaldo Oro look good. He could, break, he could re- make Astral look like Ricky Steamboat. Yes. I mean, uh, and and think of all the education Astral would get. Yeah, if he worked with those guys. I, I would bet that guy. Would yeah, so it's like, it's it's, no it's just weird. Like like you were saying, this whole thing. Get back, get back, back yeah. to the match. So fortunately, uh, Mascara Dorada, whatever it was, wasn't as bad because he gets in the ring. Starts and doing flips. <laughs> he scared the shit out of me. Yeah, but I, I mean, I had I don't remember that one match where I can't remember the guy's name. He's a nice guy, but. I was it was one of those Simi Valley matches where I was under a Was it Hell Kid? What <laughs> <laughs> No, it wasn't obvious. The guy actually did okay, but he's really green and um but he gave me a super stiff elbow drop and it it nailed me right in the solar plexus. Oh really? I mean really hard and I actually th- it hurt so bad I thought I broke some ribs. And wow. I wasn't able to get up. Huh. And well I, can go I didn't know that. Was that when I was eating two slices of pizza as I watched you in Must pain? be, must be, yeah. I, I wouldn't have an idea. I was in the audience eating two slices of pizza as I would be ashamed pain. if you went and said, Kurt, are you okay? <laughs> yeah. No, 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 no. I would have appreciated if you asked if I was okay at reason while eating the pizza <laughs> yes. and then asked me, hey, can I, I borrow a buck for a yes. with you? <laughs> this pizza's making my mouth dry. No, I, but I actually could not get up. The, the weird shit that I do, like, at certain shows, too. Is, well, I still think of the Hector Canales thing. <laughs> Like, where I'm filming it oh, at the time. Great, it's, not, it's not I think filming. It, you should really write about yes, all this. Yes, I should just write I, all this weird I, shit. I think it's awesome. Yeah. No, I... You know, this is where I got in a rant on, you know... So what did you do when you... Indie, indie guys... Well, that's the thing. He tries to pick me up for his finishing maneuver. Yeah. And I can't remember what it was. But it... I... I think I was trying to tell him, just like, uh, give me a DDT or something. Give me something I get, and then and he said, no, I got to do my maneuver. And I, just, I was so mad. And I was okay, but I really, at that moment, I really thought I was hurt. And I think, I assume that's what happened with Mosco Dorada. Cause yeah. I've had times where I think, oh my God, I think I broke something. And then a few minutes later, you realize, oh, it's just. It just hurt. So he gets back, and, he, and he's fine after, you know. Yeah. He's, he's, he's his old Mosco Dorada. Did he do Rio Dorada? Did he dive? He dived. Yes, he <laughs> dived. Uh, so he was fine. Or he dove. I he, dove. <laughs> he dove. He dove. Did he oh, do- my sister would kick my ass yeah. if she heard me say he dived. I'm sure she'd kick you if she yeah. heard the entire podcast. She'd be like, oh my God, you oh, guys totally, are just totally. wrecking the English yeah. language. Yeah. So, well, but what was interesting in that final fall, uh, Christico uh, submits Mephisto, and that's the main focus. Yeah, because they're going to have a title match. Monday. Yes. Now, you excited about that title match? You're going to watch it? I actually am. Should be good. Yeah, I. And this is the interesting thing. And 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 one, it seemed like the other guys were 
you know, kind of. And you're like thinking, why don't they have Mont- Nero Casas versus Mascara Mascar Dorada? <laughs> I would rather see that. Yeah. But but the funny thing is, uh, Caristico was so rough on Mephisto, I just thought, just call him Maruto, damn it. And then he grabs the mic, and, you know, usually I should have no optimistic side of me still not understanding much Spanish after all mm-hmm. these years. But I kind of dug that I didn't understand what they're saying because Caristico grabbed the mic and just just cuts a promo on Mephisto and I don't know what he was saying. But that was a heel promo. Yeah. Not even close to being anything a baby face would do. He made Steve Austin uh, you know, look like like a Rick Steamboat interview. Uh-huh. He was just running... This, and, you know, if I were just this little kid who was watching, I'd say, this poor Mephisto guy, why is he being so mean to him? <laughs> and then when Mephisto gets handed the mic, he does a, a he does a good promo on, but he definitely looks like the baby face. Yeah. And I just think of that really short run they had with uh, Mystico as a, a heel. With a Verno. Yeah. And he he was... Yeah, I mean, from what I understand, he is kind of a heel in real life. Yeah. You know, so is Mephisto, though. Is he really? <laughs> yeah, he's a bit of an asshole. Well, in the... Well, not a, not, a bad, not a bad guy, just he acts... He likes to be, like... Cantankerous? Yeah, he's just one of those guys. Well, but, it, but isn't uh, isn't Caristo go kind of, like, think the sun, sun shines upon him? It does, you know? though. <laughs> just kidding. Uh, it does. If we end up talking to him on next Friday, Saturday, you're going to have to That's true. That's true. So are we going to that? You haven't decided? Yes, we are. Yeah. We are. So we're going to interview. interview. We're going to interview Volador Jr. and Christica. How, how do you say it? People say you're a real dick sometimes. Uh, <laughs> how do you say that in Spanish? <laughs> Culero. <laughs> or mamon or whatever. So anyway, that's uh, that's Puebla. I dug it. You know, I, you know, I understand that. I understand why people don't dig Puebla. There's because there's so much good wrestling available. Well, it's not that they don't dig Puebla. Show. Every show is like that. It's not just Puebla. Yeah, it's not a. It's there's no specific. I don't think I've heard somebody say they specifically hate that CML show. Mm-hmm. It's like the variety of CML shows. It's like you can't figure out which one's the good one to watch. <laughs> because like every single one, like one week it's like it, the Friday show will be good one week, the next week it's the Tuesday show. The following week it's Puebla, oh, or I, sometimes it's not in front of them. One of the reasons I'm watching Puebla is everybody keeps telling me how how Puebla's. Yeah, because it's been oh, it's been really bad. So I, for so a I, long time. I started watching at a good time then. Yeah, you picked it and when it's bad. No, it's it's been bad like it's been bad for like since October, November last mm-hmm. year. Yeah, but it's there's always a couple of shows that are good, so it's like you get a couple of matches. So the, so if I keep watching, I'll finally see the true Puebla. Depends. We shall. See. Well, that's the one. That's the one show where you're probably going to get the main. That and the Friday show are the ones that you're, you might get the big stars on. So. Mm-hmm. Because I think Tuesdays, they split the crews, and then Sundays, you know, right. everybody's everywhere. So, so yeah, um, but it was fun seeing the main event where they they didn't seem in a hurry to leave. Yeah. <laughs> they, yeah. they actually did hang out there a lot, cutting promos. So. Yeah, it's going to be good. So, I look forward to that match, play, um, Caristico versus Mephisto. With Caristico winning. <laughs> <Just> absolutely. <kidding. laughs> actually, he'll lose. They'll keep on having him lose in every single... <laughs> single singles match in CMLL for some reason. So Kurt, the big news this past week, the grand actually the past two weeks, CML, CMLL announced the Grand Prix 2016 edition. Since I was so focused historical. on historical, I know nothing about it. it tell me, it, it's tell a tell historic, me. it's a historic tournament that they've done in CML. <laughs> uh-huh. So historic that they forgot to do it the last eight years. <laughs> 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 they did it back in 2008. I think you might have seen that one with um, the TNA guys, Alex Shelley. Yes. Um, that was a really good one, too. Yes, I remember that, actually. Marco was in that. Um, Sanjay Dutt, I think, was in that. Damn, they, um, are, are they saying saying we knew how, how absence makes the heart grow fonder, so we, we put it off for eight years. Yeah, you know what it was. They saw Lucha Libre World Cup for AAA. They're like, hey, let's, we could do that, too. <laughs> let's do it. Well, they have the connection with um, New Japan. Mm-hmm. And New Japan has a connection with Ring of Honor. True. So they were, and there's always foreign, there's always foreigners in Lucha, wrestler, foreign wrestlers in Mexico. Mm-hmm. So they could pick up guys to do that also. 
And the fact that it's only eight every eight years. Like, and it's only eight it guys. Landmark and yeah. historic. So it's going to be historic because it's um, they haven't done it in a while. Is there a way of flipping off the World Cup instead of being every four years or going to be every eight years? Well, the, world, the, the AAA World Cup is going to be annual. At least the last two years it's been annual. Yeah. <laughs> we don't know what it'll be like in the next couple of years. Um, the So last week they made the announcement. And the first guy that they announced as part of... It's Team Mexico versus Team World. Mm-hmm. Eight versus eight. It's not going to be like um, a trios tournament so, like so the, the Lucha. Whole turf versus yeah, it's not going to be like Lucha Libre World Cup where it's th- a bunch of trios. Right. This is going to be eight guys versus eight guys, and then um, is it working? Oh yeah, just, just <laughs> we'll make certain. Oh, um, <laughs> so so they make the announcement last week of who the first guy is going to going to be in the tournament, and who is it? Back from France. Part of Team Mexico, Diamante Azul. Ooh, okay. So it's already off to a bad start. Hola, cemento. <laughs> and so, um, so then this past week they held a press conference to announce Team Mexico. And they actually, <laughs> this is good, this is hilarious. They announced Team Mexico. And then they mentioned that in a, they're going to they're gonna announce Team World on a later date. Mm-hmm. So what is t- this typical CMLL? What happens? Five minutes after announcing that they were going to announce the Team World on a later date, they announced Team World at this press conference. <laughs> so um, I'll just run down, run down the team. Team Mexico will be um, Diamante Azul, uh, Maximo Sexy, Shocker, mm-hmm. Ultimo Guerrero, Volador Jr., Rey Escorpion, Mephisto, and Rush. Ah, nice. So that's nice. going to... I think the only guys I... I could live without would be Shocker and Diamante Azul, but the rest of the team yeah. are perfectly fine. And you know, the sad thing is, those two guys will be the, like the last two guys in the match. You know, because that's <laughs> it's CMLL, they always do that. I'm pretty sure the first guy out will end up being um, either Mephisto or Ray Scorpion. Mm-hmm. That's what I'm kidding. Um, team World will be Marco Corleone and Okumura from CMLL. From New Japan will be Kushida, who's really good, Michael Elgin, or Elgin. I don't know how he's pronounced. Is it Michael Elgin? I guess Elgin. Elgin. That'd be my guess. Um, Tamatonga and Ta- Tangaroa. That's Tamatonga is Tang- uh, Tangaroa is Tamatonga's um, brother, and I'm gonna get tongue tied. That, <laughs> that was Tamatonga before, Tangaroa. <laughs> before we started the podcast, you're saying, "What do you know about Tonga?" Yes, and yes. I said nothing, and you just smiled like, "Yeah, I know you know." Nothing. Yeah, he was in WWE as um, Camacho, I think. Oh, okay. Um, and then the final two guys are Johnny Idol from New Zealand mm-hmm. and Sam Adonis from the U.S. Those are indie level guys. Okay, um, Sam Adonis, I've never heard that. <laughs> Johnny Idol? No, I never heard yeah. that one either. Um, Johnny Idol, um, he's rust- both of these guys have been wrestling in DTU. Mm-hmm. And DTU out of Mexico has connected with, um, has a bit of an agreement now with um, CMLL. Oh. I don't know if you've seen their shows where they have, they've been booking a lot of the CMLL talent lately. Like the, the the big giant scar Titan has now. Yes, that comes from a DTU show. Really? Yeah. Wow. How did he? How did that happen? Um, I think light tubes or something. Oh, Jesus. Yeah, but he's he's a Sabu fan, so I think he's okay, he's okay with it. Yep. Um, yeah. So those were the two teams announced. Um, it happens July first. Actually, I, I actually I'm kind of curious to see because I know Kushida and and Elgin are good. Elgin or Elgin, whatever. They're both good. Marco's good. Mm-hmm. I, I made a joke that I wonder what, what spot Okumura gets eliminated for second or third because <laughs> he's not he's not he's yes. not going to be the first one out. The first one out is going to be one of those other two dudes that are oh probably that are in the, 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 indie the guys. yeah the indie guys that nobody Easily. I know when they mentioned those guys like who <laughs> will, like, will, will Jim Cornette be managing Marco Corleone's team? <laughs> <laughs> well, Johnny Idol, I saw him do a, a good promo on. Um, that's all I've seen of him. The other guy I haven't seen at all. So. Oh, very cool. Um, the Lucha Libre World Cup for AAA, speaking of all these world terms, um, the Lucha Libre World Cup is happening this Friday and on Sunday. Are you watching that? I might. You're going to order it on iPay-Per-View? No, I'm not going to For 25 it. bucks, It's nope, available for... Nope, nope. Uh, the women's division, they actually have a men's and women's division. There's going to be eight men, eight teams. I think we talked about this on the last show, except mm-hmm. there were a bunch of question marks. Yes. And then there were the the four women's teams, the four women's team. I think they covered. I think we talked about all four teams, didn't we? 
I don't the women? recall. Yeah. Oh, the women? Yeah. I don't know if we talked about all four of them. Team Mexico is going to be Fabi Apache, Mary Apache, and Lady Apache. And uh, awesome. Dave, Mel- Dave Meltzer wrote on um, The Observer, Lady Apache teams with the, with her sisters. <laughs> her stepdaughters? Yes. <laughs> it's, not her, it's not her sisters. It's, their, it's, it's her stepdaughters. Her former stepdaughters. Former I don't stepdaughters. Yeah. Because um, Grand Apache was that her first marriage? I think so, or yeah. second, somewhere in somewhere in between, um, in between Brasso, De Oro, and Electroshock, or something. She and, doesn't mess yeah, around. Yeah, something she, around she the, gets, she, Yeah, yeah. Um, Team USA. This is actually, well, I don't know. Sienna, I've never seen Sienna from TNA. Um, yeah. Cheerleader Melissa, who's cool. really good, and S- Santana Garrett from Stardom. Oh yes, the one. The one Dan and I got to stare at like, <laughs> while, while you were talking to um, to Hudson. To Hudson and yes, yeah. Um, Team Japan is Aja Kong, Sumiri Natsu, and Yuki Miyazaki. What do you think of that team? Well, Aja Kong. Yeah. <laughs> so if she still could. I just she still can do that spot where she just knocks the person okay, out. Gotcha. So, yeah, cool. but she's not. A, she's. I don't think she's ever been like that. I have not seen her in ages. Yeah. I've seen her a couple of times, but it's not. It's not. I don't. I, yeah, I don't have time to watch all this stuff. She's one of the few Japan women I actually got to see live when yeah. I was there. She was really good. Oh, right? she was awesome. Yeah. Um, Team Canada is Taya Valkyrie, Casey Spinelli, and Ali. Ali is the girl I was telling you that I heard her annoying voice oh, on TNA, yes. and I was like, oh, I'm done with TNA. Uh-huh. Um, so the men's division. The men's division is Team Triple A: Pentagon Junior, Psycho Clown, and Tejano Junior. Seems like a pretty good favorite to win it all. <laughs> Just yeah, that, 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 all to yeah. or to lose it. <laughs> <laughs> Knowing AAA, they probably have them lose. Absolutely. Uh, Team Noah is Maybach Taniguchi, Naomi Naomichi Marufuji, and Taiji Shimori. Mm-hmm. Um, Team Royal Road and Zero One is Akebono, Ikuto Hidaka, and Masato Tanaka. Um, Team TNA, I mentioned them last time. Eli Drake, Ethan Carter the Third, and Tyrus. Mm-hmm. Did you get any um, do any research on that team? Because I know last last time we talked about it, you had no idea who they were. No, no. The, you still didn't bother? You know, of all those you, names... You didn't bother watching a full episode of TNA? Uh, <laughs> After I told you about the Hardys Oh, God. Oh! Video and, and, and just, just do a thumbnail sketch of that Hardy thing. What What's that all about? So there's this... Um, I didn't watch TNA, but um, there's this... Um, there's there's the, the version they showed in TNA on the Impact show. And there's there's a director's cut, mm-hmm. which is the full version of um, the full version has uh, Matt Hardy at home playing the piano, um, doing these weird things like welcoming you to his home and something. <laughs> and then you see Jeff Hardy riding his his I think it's his motorcycle around like this lake because they live near a lake. And uh-huh. I think they I think he lives they live like cr- nearby, don't they? Like across each other that or something. I don't know. Yeah. So he's riding and he's gonna go there and and you see um, Re- Rebby Sky or whatever the. Um, mm-hmm. Matt Hardy's wife she's walking out because Matt Hardy's lost it so she's carrying her baby in her in this like pouch uh-huh. and she's leaving and Jeff Hardy's like go like telling her you go because she's like she's like she's like Matt Hardy Matt's gone crazy uh, Manny um, Money Matt I think something Matt, Money Matt or some, some weird shit name that they gave him so um, Jeff Hardy's like go so he goes in there and, and Matt Hardy's like calls him Nero I don't know why he's calling um, Brother Nero. I don't this, know why he's calling him that. This sounds like a bad Vince Russo idea. But Matt Hardy has this white hair, like uh-huh. this white hair, so he looks like a wizard. I saw the picture. <laughs> yes. yes. So yes. so then um, Matt Hardy's like, so so Jeff Hardy comes in. He's like, "Are you ready to sign the contract?" I guess they're having a match. Keep in mind, I don't I don't watch TNA at all. So if I'm if you guys are watching, if you guys watch TNA and I'm I get this completely wrong. It's because I don't watch it and I have no interest in watching it. And I don't really need to know about this whole story or anything else. <laughs> so don't worry about it. I'm just telling Kurt. I'm just telling everybody at the video oh I watched. Lord, oh Lord. So then, um, so then, um, where, where was that? Oh, so Jeff Hardy's like, he's like, are you ready to sign the contract? So Matt Hardy's like, yes. So they walk, but not here. So he takes, he's got the contract. He walks out to this. They have this giant like outdoor gym. Yes. Where they have the ring and everything in there. So Matt Hardy's walking. And he's like the as he's walking by, there's there's this little garden near on, outside the gym. And like, do we and this know guy, what the contract is? And this, and this, a, is... And I'm just, you got to watch the show to know what it is. I mean, obviously, so they know about it. People who watch it know what it is. We're not going to know about it. So as he's walking out, 
he's walking to the gym. There's this um, gardener out there, and the gardener is like, "Everything okay, Mister Hardy?" Oh, <laughs> so then Matt Hardy's like, "Yes, Ruben, everything's okay." And then he goes, he walks in. Jeff Hardy totally ignores the the the, the gardener. Tells you what. <laughs> Tells you what an asshole he is. <laughs> Just kidding. This is not even. So then Matt Hardy's in the ring, and he's like, he he tells Jeff Hardy something, and Jeff Hardy yells back, and and he Jeff Hardy runs into the ring. Matt Hardy <laughs> gets out of the ring. They have this wood table, like this kitchen table, like the type of table you would have like like dinner at. Oh, no, it's not it's not a wrestling table. It's a kitchen table, and he has the he has he puts the contract there. And Jeff Hardy goes over. He's like, "You ready to sign the contract?" So then um, Matt Hardy's like, signs it. And then like, as they're gonna do something, I think Matt Hardy gets back in the ring. And then Jeff Hardy gets up in the ring. As they're arguing, Jeff's standing outside the ring. Matt's on the on the inside. Rebby Sky runs back in, and she's like, she's like, here. She goes, goes, Jeff, catch! So she throws the baby at him. What? <laughs> but it's not the baby. It's a doll. Oh. <laughs> so, so then Jeff Hardy's like. What the fuck? Like, what the hell is this? So then Matt Hardy attacks him, and then he throws him. He he like does like I I can't remember if it's like a, a Spanish fly mm-hmm. through the table, and this table did it like it breaks like just like to the side, <laughs> but you have this the pointed up part still going up there, and then Matt Hardy says something really weird or something, and that's the end of the whole video, and it's like just the weirdest shit I've ever seen. It sounds like an experimental art video from New York. Yes, that's what it looked like. That's what it looked like. It looked like something. I, I told. I, I was telling somebody. Look, it looked like something you would see on um, Adult Swim. You know, like you would that's see on. So you would bizarre. like. You would look. You would see on one of those comedy sketch video shows where they, where you're like, this is really weird, but it's. I got to keep watching because it's weird. Yeah, like you're 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 waiting to understand it. Waiting yeah, like to get to like know. like you got to be high to find it funny. <laughs> you know that. Well, that I think I think something. that 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 might have been the reason. Oh my lord! But it's weird. I'm surprised they. Well, I I think I know why. I, I'm guessing I know why. <laughs> After watching that video, I understand why <laughs> why they weren't on in in uh in Lucha Libre World Cup. <laughs> <laughs> oh my! So god. then, uh, Team Lucha Underground is Brian Cage. Mm-hmm. Okay, this is kind of dumb. I mean, they should know. I mean, they had Johnny Mundo on the team. Mm-hmm. Brian Cage, Brian Cage, and Johnny Mundo were feuding. Yes. They, that, that kind of ended on, in Lucha Underground but then they have Brian Cage and Chavo also on the team Chavo and Brian Cage were feuding recently so everybody who knows this who watches it from the US is confused at this team but I don't think anybody in Mexico because they I was don't say, say, in Mexico they don't show Lucha Underground so a lot of people mm-hmm. don't really know that's that's going on so still like, I say say send this line to Lucha Underground I bet they don't know they're going to fire everybody yeah they end up firing everybody <laughs> like what this is part of our they're they're, they're, they're feuding. yes <laughs> um, team international is Dragon Azteca Jr Rey Mysterio and Dr. Wagner Jr I think they're probably going to win it <laughs> I'm kind of. I'm guessing they probably want to see that. I think they probably wanted Prince Puma, but they weren't going to get Prince Puma since mm-hmm. Prince Puma's alter ego is in, or e, al, you know, alter persona or whatever you want to call it, is currently in New Japan. Yes, with a shot to win the Best of the Super Juniors. Um, Team Legends is Blue Demon Junior, Kanek, and La Parka. <laughs> La Parka, <laughs> La Parka is getting like he got. A, he he said he was in a legend, so then now he's upset because he's like he's like. So I say I'm not a legend, you guys will get upset. They call me a legend, you get upset. I say I'm not a legend, you get upset. <laughs> Make up your mind. He's like, what's up? So then um, El Hito uh, responds to him. He's like, hey, hey, you're, you're, you're a legend. I used to watch you when I was a little kid. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, hey, that's, that's how you get the legends. Um, team Rest of the World is Apollo, Mil Muertes, and Rockstar Spud. Uh, Mil Muertes, he's not supposed to be Messias. Okay. Yeah. So he he answered some questions as like he was Messias. Oh, that's great. So it was funny. So that's actually. I mean, I don't know. I'm not. I'm not as excited because I don't really care about Team Legend. I don't really care about Team TNA. It's 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 a kind the of the Team thing, Rest of the World isn't that it's appealing kind of either. I had nothing to do. I'd watch for free. Yeah. You know. But for twenty five bucks, nah. you're you're not really sold. I'm I'm I think the team that intrigues me the most is the team um the patchy the patchy Oh god um, yeah. I think that's the one but it's like the women's matches I don't really find those. I mean she, Melissa will do will be I would I want to see Melissa versus um uh, Fabby. Oh, especially awesome. especially after you hear the Conan podcast in Spanish where he's talking about 
how Fabi always takes liberties on the foreign women. Which I okay, this is which we're I guess we'll get to this now. This is what I think we should get to now because uh, Conan's podcast. Everything room. going on the talk of the town these days, whether you love him or hate him, is Conan. Yeah. And sounds like he's uh, he's declaring all out war on Trudeau. Yeah, every every week it's a con- a new story that well on his Facebook page he posted that um that video of the ex secretary who got fired yes. by AAA for um sh- her son was in an accident and she needed time off to like to help him out because he basically couldn't she's like he can he couldn't feed himself he was in the hospital could right. could barely do her anything so she took time off they gave her the okay. Mm-hmm. She goes and help. She, she. I think she said his his her son was in the hospital for a week, but she still needed more time off. So she called and um, Joaquin's father, whose name is also Joaquin. This is very common. Mm-hmm. With, well, I mean, it's common in all with all families that you name your son after, you know, the father and the grandfather yes. and the son. You know, there's a whole bunch of people. And named. then the mother's middle name and yeah, name, there, it's name, all confusing. There's a lot of confusion. brothers, cousins, sons, yeah, dog's so, name. And so she said she spoke to the grand to the Joaquin's father, mm-hmm. whose name is Joaquin also, and he said that he was fine with it, that he let them know because mm-hmm. she said I kept calling and Maricela would never answer, like they every time I called Maricela wasn't available to talk to me, so then um, she calls. I think a couple of days later she didn't hear back from them, so she called. And he said, oh, yeah, I haven't heard back. I'll let you know in a few days to find out what's going on. So then he calls, I think, a day later and tells her, yeah, um, Maricela just told me that um, they've accepted your letter of resignation. What? And she was like, I didn't resign. (laughs) And he's like, so then he's like, so she kind of got upset with him. And she said, I know you don't have anything to do with this, but I didn't resign. I go, she's like, if you're going to fire me, fire me. Mm-hmm. She's like, that's the proper way thing to do. Yeah. She's like, but they didn't. They they wanted me to resign because I guess in 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 Mexico. Well, I mean, in, in anywhere really, if you resign, you don't get any. I think you don't get any um, benefits or whatever. That, oh, absolutely. The no. unemployment benefits and absolutely. stuff like that. So um. So then um, he apologized. She tried to keep. She, I think she went to the office and couldn't get an in. Getting getting, she couldn't talk to anybody. So she said, "I only my only recourse was to go through um go through it legally." Yes, legal means legal system. So then she starts telling all these stories about how how AAA is a horrible place to work, how bad they treat uh-huh. their employees, how they treat the wrestlers horribly. She corroborated the is it corroborated the is that the Co- word uh, collaborated collaborated. Yeah. Um, I like the word cooperate. I know, I know. I just, <laughs> I, I, I want to write that down. I want to uh, get that in Webster's. I just, I just like that. I just figured it's either collo- collaborate or co. Well, I've got to trademark it though. Yeah, you, you need to get royalty. I'm That's becoming right. Conan, where he just comes up with words too. Hard. <laughs> Remember, wasn't there a show where he just kept make, coming up with words? <laughs> you'll, yeah, and you'll use it over and over again. You'll be vociferous. <laughs> yes, you'll be very vociferous. Yeah, so, so about then, these people being vociferous. So, so then, um, but anyways, that stuff. Remember the stories that Conan had said how how there were wrestlers who would flamitas like he couldn't get a, he couldn't get interviews with them like they would they would, they wanted to talk to him he would show up and he would spe- spend like hours there and nobody would be there to like talk to him so he mm-hmm. would end up leaving so she said that was true that mm-hmm. that there were wrestlers that would be there for hours she's, or, and, or employees and she's like they would be there for hours I mean they get hungry and they were afraid of leaving because they thought they would lose their job. So they would just stay there until they showed up, and they would—they're like the Roll Dons would just show, show up at whatever hour they wanted to. And I'm like, oh, well, that's wow—that's Mexican. That's that's happened to us a few times. So, <laughs> like although say, it wasn't—it wasn't—we it, weren't going to lose money over it, so it wasn't—it wasn't something. Absolutely, that we were... Mike. Now, just your impression or the general impression, obviously. You know, Conan is unhappy with. Truth. Yeah, yeah. So, so you're thinking, oh, it's obviously yeah, it's a smear campaign, but that doesn't bitter, mean bitter. Not truth to Although truth. he says he's not bitter, but I mean, come on, it's like everybody who's come out of AAA has really been. You're not really getting these. I mean, when you got guys who were there for like the longest time, who had left before yes. when Pena was no, around. That's true. That's true. They're saying it's hor- worse than it was. Like Mr. Electro. They act, he actually did a uh, uh, not a he did an interview. That's right. Yes. And he was asked about it, yeah. and, he, and he said it was it was 
it wasn't the same as when so Kanye like, was it around. So it sounds like Conan's voicing what everybody feel but feels, but Conan's... Well, Conan's often the alpha cat, so yeah. he's kind of taking the lead and yeah. trying to really get it out. And you know, everybody... Oh, and like Conan says, a lot of the guys aren't going to say that because they're afraid of, they close the door for themselves. Yeah. Because they're, they're still wrestling. He's like, I'm not wrestling, so it doesn't matter. Well, that's why the other week I said... I'm jazzed that the independent scene is thriving once again because, you know. Yeah. And I'm glad some, I mean, not a lot, but some wrestlers can get gigs in the U.S., but, I mean. Now, there's a lot of guys, and there's going to be openings because if WWE is really that interested in getting guys from Mexico, that yes, means it's going to be, like, I, I talented hate, younger wrestlers are going to have a shot. I mean, I mean, the promotional side of wrestling I th- is always going to be kind of, like, uh, very barbaric and sleazy in so many ways, but... I hate the thought of wrestlers just deathly afraid of losing their spot because there's nowhere else to go. I yeah. Mean, I, 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 I love when there's competition because it finally gives them yeah, so some Co- power. Conan coming off the sexy star thing. Well, actually, yeah, I don't think we oh, talked yeah, about we that. Oh, yeah, we haven't covered that one. The, What's... Sexy Star did it. A, she was the second guest on um, Conan's podcast. The mm-hmm. first one was Pentagon Jr., I'm guessing they're going to end up not getting these guests at some point, because I mean, I, I unless Triple is completely ob- oblivious to the whole thing, which mm-hmm. is possible. Uh, but Sexy Star was on the show, and she just came out. She just came off so horribly on the podcast. Really? I mean, she just came off like the biggest diva in in wrestling. Oh lord! Like really, like she she kind of tried to make herself come off like she could take like she was like a like a legit fighter and stuff like that. Oh, no. Like a shooter and stuff like that. She was t- talking shit about Jennifer Blake and all these other, like, like just being very, like... With Jennifer Blake, she was very disrespectful. Like... And, and you know, it was funny because um, Conan, Conan mentioned it later mm-hmm. on that the reason... Um, he actually talked about it more, that Jennifer Blake... Because they asked him... Well, he, he was talking about Jennifer Blake and he said the reason Jennifer Blake... When, when, when Sexy Star brought it up but didn't want to go further was because Dorian liked se- uh, Jennifer Blake like liked you know like he wanted to get oh with her. he wanted a little piece of yeah the he wanted a little piece of the action so then so then that's why he kept bringing her in please pardon that commercial interruption we actually no did commercials that. though <laughs> oh you can put something in yeah, I ain't gonna not do a it. commercial I'm not gonna do come that come on Fredo let's yeah, have fun with that's this that's okay Actually, we did it just to annoy the crap out of you guys. The battery died on us. The battery died on us. And no, we didn't do it to annoy you because we know the rest yeah. of the podcast annoys the shit out of everybody. So I was getting to the good part of Sexy Stars. Um, yes. Oh, no, yes. it was Jennifer Blake. Jennifer Blake. So, um, yes. so then Conan just talked about how, how that, what I said about Dorian, that Dorian was had the hots for her. So then um, you think, okay, it's over. So then, uh, this is the Spanish podcast, yes. the podcast boom with um, Aldo Farias and Roberto Figueroa. Roberto, I've known since he was eight years old. So, um, so then they're talking about something else, and then Aldo, who me- mentioned he was drinking whiskey while he was doing the <laughs> podcast, <laughs> asked um, asked Conan, "Hey, tell us more about um, why did Jennifer Blake and um, Sexy Star don't get along?" And so Conan said, and you're in wrestling too, and mm-hmm. we even talked about this when we went to the show. Um, Conan said, um, well, you know, women in wrestling, they're always, there's always, um, there's always drama. Mm-hmm. It's like, there's always drama. He's like, you could have 80, rust- 80 male wrestlers and four female wrestlers, and the four female wrestlers are going to have more drama than the 80 rust- male wrestlers. Well, and the problem, because there's four of them, and they're all going to be yeah, and they all want to be the star. Yeah, they all want to be the alpha cat. Yeah, so um, so then he said, he said that's really the, all it was. He's like, he's like, because that's how it was. He's like, it's not just Jennifer Blake and sexy stars. Like, he's like Fabi Apache. Mm-hmm. It's like Fabi Apache. She doesn't think any of the women that they've had in AAA have been really good. Mm-hmm. Like she hate, she didn't like any of them. Like I guess she broke. Um, I don't. I think it might have been Taya Valkyrie's nose oh at one God, point. Oh my God! I didn't hear about that. I think it was her because I I remember mm-hmm. her having that. I remember seeing her and. But that's what he said. He said because she thought she was awful, and I'm like, I'm like, hey, Fabi is a good. She's a good. Uh, she recognizes talent. Then, but she, well, you're talking about a gal who has. I mean, because she's worked Japan. Yeah, right. she's I mean, and she's trained. She's a really good. She's worked, yeah, she's She's wrestles like she's, like. And, and Conan Conan says she's arguably one of the three best female wrestlers in absolutely. So, so I mean, when you think of women's wrestling in Mexico, it's 
Fabi Apache, Mary Apache, Marcella, and Amapola. Mm-hmm. Those are the four women that stand Absolutely. out over everybody else. I think now Zuxis is starting to enter that group. But like, it's true. I mean, every female, and I always want, I think we've all wondered that, but I've heard stories about that. Fabi's really rough with the female females, the foreigners. So then um, Conan talked about um, how Fabi would always complain about how bad the women were. <laughs> so then one day Conan got tired of her um, complaining. So he told her, well, if you're so upset about it, why don't you train them? Mm-hmm. And so she tried to train them. The only problem was that she was roughing, roughing them up in training too. So they none of them wanted to train with her oh, anymore. Geez. So it's like, it's like... Well, I, and that's also kind of like, I mean... I'm assuming, it's an old style of. That's what I was gonna say, and I'm assuming they still do that in Mexico even more than they do here. Yeah, I'm with, assuming whether because there's a lot of there's a lot of older, not only older wrestlers, but there's a lot of wrestlers who c- come from families of wrestling. Absolutely. So, so they follow the generation type of thing, way of thinking. Yeah, and, and I, 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 and that is that was very common the roughing up, and and you still oh, hear God, our stories yeah. about it's not it's not a roughing up like it was here, like where you would hear like guys practically like. You know, you hear stories about guys hurting each other practically, like somebody wanting to hurt somebody just to scare them out of the business. Oh yes, that happened all. Like the time. over there, I don't, I don't really. I'm sure it was, but there, it's not as like the last couple of years. You don't hear about that. Yeah, and also, I mean, there was something I could understand where you would guys getting into business, you would stretch them. You do have to be tough to be in this business, and especially with the whole kayfabe factor back then. People in public would bait you, and yeah, they didn't want somebody like me who can't really fight well or anything. Although like now that. you can, right? You know jujitsu. What? Don't you know jujitsu? Didn't you train? I've learned. A, I, for what a was short it you time. trained? What was it? Yeah, you were for training? a short time I did yeah. jujitsu. It's pretty cool. Yeah, and I stuff remember like that. that. But you told me about it. I hate That's why I said bees. it. <laughs> That's why I said it. <laughs> That's why I said whenever there's a, something going on at a wrestling show, I just stand behind you because I know you'll. That's right. You you'll, you'll be my protect belt me. And my yes. Say, <laughs> use your magic magic belt. So no, on, a big, 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 yeah, I mean, but there was a difference. There were guys like you've heard the stories about Eddie Graham just got a sadistic kick out of seeing guys yeah. get hurt. When I did know guys, I, I think I think with Fabi, it's more she just thinks they suck, so she's going to hit them hard. Hmm. And it's like just her proving a point how bad they are. Like to her, that's proving. Oh, a point. gotcha. So you know it's, what I mean. it's, like, it's like a predestined thing. Yeah, she like just see, wants like like trying to say, see, she yeah. sucks. You know, that's what I mean. Yeah. Um, the other person that got a lot of the heat from Conan is this in the most recent podcast was um, Copete Salazar, one really? of the, one of the AAA referees, mm-hmm. who um, they also announced they also they were they wanted to more or less um, tell you who he is. We all know him as a referee. Yes. But he also does a lot of the programming and um, the booking out. He's like the agent, booking okay. out talent. You know, the Not the road agent, but an agent to book out talent. Mm-hmm. Um, it's him and two other people who are the, you know, like if you want a show or you want talent, you call them and they get you the talent. Um, Roberto was the one that knew because mm-hmm. he works for the Monterey um, Lucha show, so he would know that. Yeah. Um, so then Conan was talking about how he uses this to help. A lot of the guys who left the promotion was because this guy would play favorites. Mm-hmm. So he would get more bookings for a certain guy, for guys he liked or girls right. he liked. So um, with the women, he would book you more if you like. Basically, I don't. I guess I could say it here. You would fuck them. Oh my god! So um, one day, um, Harochita, who just left, mm-hmm. she um, told Dorian Roldan, "Hey." Um, Copete Salazar told me he would book me more if I gave him my ass. Mm-hmm. You no, know, fuck them. And um, I like that term, gave yeah. him my ass. Yes, that's how I translated it because that's how it was said. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, you know, people are Sounds like, great though. But you know, you know, people like on Twitter, they're like, why don't you just? That's not. He meant fuck him, and yeah. I'm like, yes, I'm not gonna write that on fucking Twitter, you know. Like, <laughs> Seriously, yes, yes. it's like it's like I could say it here because our podcast isn't going to be on any other like if it was on if we were like on a, a syndication. But, but, but that's the way I could picture requesting uh, requesting sexual nobility. Excuse me, would you give me your? Office? Yeah, yeah, you know, <laughs> you know, that's not what he said, but it's I know, like. I know. Um, so, what was I saying? So um, she told Dorian. Mm-hmm. So then Dorian told her that that wouldn't happen. That her his his 
His mom owns a promotion. Mm-hmm. She's a woman. She's not going to let this happen to another woman. Mm-hmm. So um, Conan then said um, this wasn't the first time that he that Copetes had been that way with women. That um, Teddy Hart's one of Teddy Hart's mm-hmm. girlfriends and one of Sex um, Sean Waltman's girlfriends mm-hmm. had experienced Copetes creepiness. Oh, jeez, Copetes creepiness. Yeah. So then. Ah. Um, Conan went further. He said, "Christina Von Eri, remember the girl mm-hmm. that wrestles? Yes. She still wrestles in, um, in, I think she wrestles in Northern California. Um, she, Conan said, she quit because she got got tired of um, of um, Copete stalking her. Mm. And I think Conan might have mentioned Jennifer Blake might have got had gotten that too, wow. which that might also mean why she might also include why she left or why she hasn't been back." Um, so then um, Conan said that one day he told uh, Maricela, hey, hey, this isn't, um, Copetes is doing this. Why don't you guys, this, he could get in real trouble. I mean, if this mm-hmm. was in the U.S., you guys would be in big t- trouble oh, because big of time. this. So um, Maricela told him, I'll investigate. So Conan said a week later, he, he sees her again and he's like, hey, so what happened? Did you talk to Copetes? Did you investigate what, all those, um, mm-hmm. all those um, <clears throat> claims? And she's like, yeah, I investigated it. I asked um, Copete Salazar and he said it wasn't true. And that's good enough. <laughs> and so Conan's like, you didn't ask any of the women? <laughs> like they, that, that, I, I, I'm curious because you don't really, it's true, you don't really see a lot of the women like booked outside on, on other shows. I mean, I, I've always noticed like the Apache's never, you don't really see the women get a lot of bookings. Yeah, they're, I, I, it's weird. Yeah, I, so, I was wondering just couple of days ago actually yeah because you know Fabian and Mary you're not really seeing them getting no getting and, all, and all, all over the place now you see a lot more and you see a lot women, of women wrestlers being involved in men's wrestling where well in the US anyway it used to be kind of a couple of women no well, well you see a lot of women r- r- women's women on other shows but it's the CML women and yeah. the indie women but like AAA you don't really see a lot of, you see them on their shows but yeah, you don't true. see them you don't see them like I don't know don't they get requests? I mean, I would imagine like Fabby and Mary would get requests. I know Sexy Star does, but that's through Lucha Underground. And yeah, she's separate. But um, like Fabby and Mary, wouldn't you want her? Wouldn't wouldn't you want Fabby or Mary versus certain guys on on indie shows? Would be pretty like a big draw. Oh hell yeah! Not, not a big draw, but I mean, yeah, just, you know, for just, an I indie mean, it's, it's it's you know, it's funny because I I don't know if you ever read the old stories about. The guy who essentially ran women's wrestling, Billy Wolf. Yeah. Uh, I think there's a documentary, isn't there, on that? Oh, it's probably in that Piss and Vinegar. Yeah. I still haven't seen that. I saw that. But, yeah, no, I mean, I mean, you're talking about the super evil man who is just sexually exploiting. That's a polite way of putting it, uh-huh. all these women. Uh, and you hear about when Moolah, you know, got kind of control of, you know, women's wrestling. Yeah, there's a lot, you know, a lot of stories of her just like. I know it's it's not it's not oh a new god. story. You just you hear about all these guys, and it's like people are like, oh my god, this is happening. It's like I'm sure it happens in other places. Too. Oh, it does. It does. Actually, actually, if, it still if, happens. If I this. if I had like a, a but you know you know what I found funny is like like when when Conan was talking about how how big how difficult it is to deal with women mm-hmm. because of the drama. I kept wondering, man, I wonder what those women's promotions. If you, because they're usually led by the promoters, usually a guy. Um, like like I, like Shimmer is, um, I think it's a guy yeah, who runs it. My hunch, and I and I star, might, Stardom is run by guys. I might be wrong. I'm be totally wrong. They just don't give a fuck. They're like, I don't care. <laughs> well, 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 here, but here's the thing: is they have a woman running like the and, and plus they're all women. And how do I put this? If you're just if you're just like four people in one group, it's like a rock band where there's going to be infighting, egos, yeah. and there's only enough to go around. If you have a women's promotion, you have like 30 women in it, and somebody starts throwing a hissy, hissy fit. Although it's happened. I mean, remember the stardom thing where that girl like shot on that one chick. But, but look what they did. You're gone. Yeah. They said, you're gone. Yeah. This is the thing. If, if, if somebody says like... Hey, I'm a big deal. You're not pushing me right. You're not doing it. The promoter says, well, there's plenty more here where you came from. Leave. Yeah. Where if there's only four or five of them and the promoter might not think, oh, there's not much of a talent pool out there, 
might say, oh, well, we got to hang on to them so they allow the drama to, yeah. you know, manifest. Plus, it's, I think with, with AAA, for, for the foreigners, I think you go with the ones that are willing to take the pay that they're going to give them. And there's, Absolutely. there might not, there's, I don't think there's as many women that are going to want to wrestle full time in Mexico. Yeah. Devote a long period of time of their careers there. But it, it takes certain people will do it. Like, like Dark Angel. Absolutely. There's only so many Dark Angels that are going to do that. You know, she's been in CML. She's I mean, been like, you have to really love the business. Yeah, because I mean, you're not, wrestling. there's a big difference between making pesos to even American dollars. Oh, absolutely. Like, whatever they're making at the well, end of the Well, that's why I'm saying you don't go to WWE, you're not going to make as much money, but you're going to see a lot of, you're going to see, you're going to see a whole different view of the world than, than yeah, you're, you're going to get more it. money than, but it's weird. I, there's this podcast I listen to called You Must Remember This, and it's pretty much uh, it's by this woman, Karina Longworth, and it's a history of Hollywood. Is it four hours long? <laughs> <laughs> no? That's the best part. It's like 35, 40 minutes oh, long. okay. You know, it's one of the best best podcasts I've ever heard. Uh, it covers anything from like the silent era to the, to the present. But... Uh, it's, you know... <laughs> It's funny because they, you know, they talk about the golden era, and you know, you hear people talking about wanting to make America great and wanting to go back to traditional values. If you heard the history of Hollywood and the so-called, you know, leave it to Beaver days, man, they were evil, it was <laughs> evil, evil business, and they're probably, they're probably, because you know, I, I, I've heard so many people since I was a kid say what a sleazy business wrestling is. Yeah. And yeah, it's true the way wrestlers are treated, the way women are treated. But I think Hollywood is. I think it happens in all types of business where you're. Well, especially of, entertainment. Yeah. I think entertainment even more yeah. so. I mean, there there are some really creepy stories. Especially if you're not making money, it comes off a lot worse too. So. Oh yeah, and the things people would do to make money yeah. just to appease people. Yeah. It's just it's just. I, I think Hollywood is every bit as sleazy, maybe even more. It's just, uh, especially back then, they had such a, a cloud of glamour covering, you know. Spe- the media was really controlled. Speaking in a lot of, of sleazy, let's talk about WWE. No, just <laughs> <laughs> nah, I actually, yeah, it's so weird. Like, I don't really understand, because there's a lot of WWE rumors right now with all the luchadors, with certain luchadors. Oh, really? Really? But I don't understand why people get so upset if guys go to WWE. It's like, I've always been, ha- I've, I've never had a problem with talent leaving one promotion to the other, especially if it benefits them. Absolutely. I mean, in yeah, in 1987, mm-hmm. little little me would have completely, I hated when, because it was, it was basically the end of the promotion when, when guys were Oh, me too. I, I, but mean, now I, was, it's like, I, wasn't a, I was a young adult. Yeah. And I was saying. Yeah, you're like, oh, this is be the end of the promotion. Because you knew they were like, because the guys that were leaving were like the big names. But like, it's, it, it, the, the, the Super Luchas posted a, a, an article about how WWE had interest in Volador Jr. and um, Rush mm-hmm. and other CML talent. But they mentioned those two specifically. And they were saying that they um, they thought that what was going to happen was Rush and Volador Jr. I don't even think this was like legit. I don't think mm-hmm. this was. I think this was just them going, this, this was going the with the rumors. Yeah, because that's absolutely. been that's been an ongoing rumor for the longest time. Mm-hmm. And I'm pretty sure Volador Jr. would tell you I've been in that rumor for like the longest time. Mm-hmm. Rush has too. Rush has been in the rumor. Rush made jokes about the rumor. I think I mm-hmm. think there's I think with certain guys, there's this um, this likelihood where they might actually end up going right. But it's like it's not going to be immediate. It's probably somewhere down the line. So, um, so um, guys get upset about these guys really, and it's like, what's the big deal? I mean, if they get an opportunity to go somewhere, it's it's worth it for them to like Absolutely. make extra money. And different people get have a different approach to the business. Some people have some set goals once they want to accomplish as a wrestler in a certain realm of wrestling other people it's a business they're and, making a living and they look, have families I think when people are like oh but look it's gonna hurt CMLL if certain guys leave I don't think like if you're worried if you think Volador Jr. and Rush leaving CMLL is the end of their, that promotion you should be seeing you're at, you should be watching you're not watching the shows they're doing absolutely a pretty good job not. on their own. Doing, absolutely, burying their own promotion. I mean, oh god! Hey, the, the, look, look at all. Look at the the huge uh, exodus of wrestlers who just left for AAA in '92, 
Everybody said CML is going to No, but it's not years. that. It's not no. that. They're doing I don't I think you're you're probably you're you're getting it the wrong way. I think you're thinking mm-hmm. that way. I'm saying even if Rush Volador Jr. stayed in CML, it's the same thing oh, as Van Lee because it's there's nothing the promotion is not really doing anything to improve. Oh, absolutely. There's nothing no, going they're, on they're, in the promotion. No, they're the diamonds in that it's, promotion. It's, it's, like, the... it's, like, it's like, yeah, they leave, somebody else is going to move up. Absolutely. You hope it's somebody good, but worst case, it ends up being the same thing as, like in, I think, in 2001 or 2002. I think it might have been 2002 when, when, I can't remember, I don't think anybody left, but they just started booking like the Bariquas and all these mm-hmm. oh, crappy yeah. groups that just suck. So you go through like a year where it's just crappy rustling. And you hear so many people say... But it's like, even now, like, if that happened, it's drawing the same amount of people that it would draw with Sombra, with Vol- Sombra leaving. I mean, when Sombra left, remember when Sombra left, everybody was like, oh, it's going to be the end. All of a sudden, they brought in 16 or 20 new guys, and it's like... Yeah. It's still the same thing. Who knows? Maybe one of those guys will be, like, the star of the promotion that ends up getting them out of it. I think right now, the biggest problem they have is they don't have a good uh, programming... Department. Oh god no! Oh god no! And and you know we have seen that before. Yeah. And and yeah no it is, it is a different thing when yeah when when Triple like, A when that happened that was different that was like that was that was them trying to like kill off CML and like build something out of that yeah because I think Pena did really have that oh yes he was yes. pissed at them so it's like and wanted to prove it to them that he could do it better absolutely than that. and and I think the likelihood uh, unless something really really just you know, scandal has happened to them or some some really financial crestfall, the likelihood is they're just going to stay in business until the family doesn't want to own it anymore. Yeah, because, I mean, if you look at, you look at like, if, if Russia and Volador left, that would just mean Ma- Mascara Dorada takes Volador's spot. Absolutely. <laughs> Russia's spot gets taken by Pierrot. <laughs> <laughs> No, I no. The, it could get it could get bad. It could get it could, bad at the point where yeah, they, they could be the worst. It, it isn't. It isn't. It isn't my. It it isn't like me. Like like what you were saying about AAA. It's more like I'm trying to point out that that it's it's going to be bad even with them. It, it's going to yeah. be good or bad with them or they without them. They have the worst direction, the yeah. worst booking, the worst crew. Yeah, so it's like they'll it, plot along yes, until they it, don't want to plot along. And then more. somebody else will come on and it'll be good. Yes. So it's like. It's like it, I, I've never had a problem with guys going to WWE because that means more guys are going to like. They'll, who knows? Maybe they'll give somebody a shot. You know, if if Rush and and, and Volador leave, maybe they have to be like, oh shit, we need to create a new start. Who knows? Maybe this time they say, hey, Barbaro Carbonario, maybe he's finally worth. Which would be up, bitch. Which I would mean, be great. I, I mean, that would be. Or like they Mascara Dorada, or you know, somebody like that, or maybe. They decide Dinamitas, the uh, Cien Caras kids are finally, mm-hmm. they got to elevate them. Or who knows, maybe they'll bring up Puma and Tiger and make them a main event tag team, yeah. which I doubt they'll do, but. Well, you know, and it. it <laughs> yeah. I know this sounds insane, but, you know, uh, even during their bad periods, CML is what I watch. And you know, the funniest thing, anything, the funniest thing, people who, who are saying that, how long would these guys be gone? You know, you're complaining about it, and like three years later, they're back in Seattle again, doing the same thing. Or who knows? Maybe they maybe well, that, that's they maybe I, they draw more people to the shows. You and never and know. that's why I love the way Somber played his cards, is because you know he 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 was more professional than about anybody I could think of. Yeah. in his exit, and it was it was done so well. I, I, I will say that was one time when CNMLL pulled something off really well. Yeah, it's it's you it's, know I, the whole. Uh, Dropping his mask to Atlantis, uh, I mean, I'm sure he has a door wide open. I think the I think the one good thing for these, and actually, I think it's it's great for these guys because I mean, there's so many guys now working in, in the U S. too. Like, even just at the indie level, they're getting work. So it's like, yes, yes, it's, it's great. I think the Meltzer mentioned that um, that Ring of Honor apparently might have worked out something with CML and might debut somebody on in on one of their July shows. Oh, that would be pretty cool. I don't know who it is. I mean, that but might be fun. That yeah, I mean, there's another place for these guys. Because, I mean, yeah, you know, it's great that... I, th- I don't think people... Like, I think a lot of people don't understand the co- ec- economy in, um, in Mexico. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't think they understand the whole e- economic part of wrestling. Where you... The whole idea is to... Yeah, you want to do, like, have five-star matches and all this shit. But it's like, you want to make money, too. I mean... Absolutely. I mean... 
Yeah. You know what? I guess that's one of the reasons when I'm, you know, I, I know I'm bringing up Quable for the umpteenth time tonight. Yeah. But <laughs> Quable yeah. isn't play, Quable isn't a main town. Mm-hmm. And I think I said this the last podcast. It reminds me of when I went to the small LA towns. That is a main town. What are you talking about? But I mean, it's not like Arena Mexico. Yeah, but that's they've only have four, three towns. Mexico City, Guadalajara. But it's like, like how big an arena is Puebla? It's Coliseos, practically. Is it about the size? Yeah. yeah. But. Guadalajara isn't that huge either. Arena Mexico is really the big one. The biggest one, yeah. yeah. But the same amount of people that, <laughs> the same amount of people that go to that are going to yeah. Puebla. But I guess what yeah. I'm saying is, is like, in the LA days, you know, there's, there's, you know, you know, they hit all these towns, and I don't think I, I don't think either guy is going like this soon anyway. So it's like I don't. Th- no, 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 either. But but what I'm saying is, now if they took back in the church, now days, if they took everybody, like if they took like ten or fifteen guys, then I would be like, hey, this is kind of fuck fucking weird. But but you know, right now in Mexico, there's so much talent. Oh God, there's yeah. so much talent. Like there's, I mean, I'm not even making this up. You could not just Mexico, but in lucha in general, there's so much great talent. It's like guys can leave. And, and and it'll move up. I kind of wish all the shitty wrestlers would go to like WWE. <laughs> Clear it out. I think that's what people want. Yeah. Like, hey, like get send but, ma- but what I'm emphasizing about like 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 towns where you're not having five star matches every night. If you're wrestling every night, schedules like wrestlers do in Mexico. Yeah. And sometimes two or three times a day. Are you gonna have to try to have a five star match? I'm not gonna fault somebody for having a low key match. Yeah, you know. Well, they try to do it for the big match. That's usually yes, yes. And and, you know, Puebla doesn't seem like the key town, the key city in Mexico. I mean, where I don't know. It's on YouTube, so it is on YouTube. But everything. I think I think I think CML would disagree with you on that. Yeah, maybe I'm wrong. I think they would. No, I'm serious. Yeah, no, no, you might be right. I, I might be totally you're, wrong. You're wrong on that. I think those three towns, those three, like, what what you see and you think, mm-hmm. what the Tuesday show and what people might say, oh, it's not that big a deal or anything, to CMLL, it's, yeah, and, but like, that's okay. how it is with promoters. They think their show's a bigger deal than what you're, you think it is. But, like, to us, it's like Friday's the show, really. Yeah. Friday's the, the, the Arena Mexico show is the big show. Everything else is, like, big deal. But to them, it's kind of like, I mean, why do you think they, they hype all this other stuff and it's like, oh, it's a big oh, deal. Well, because, uh, like, in La Belle days, San Jose was a de- decent-sized arena. Yeah, it's... But when I went there, the wrestlers didn't work all that hard. Yeah. And, uh... There's, like, a different mentality. But, but, the, yeah, but the Olympic, at the Olympic Auditorium is one that usually turn it on. They yeah. wouldn't turn it on like they do today. Because that was televised, too, right? It was televised, but even the even the Friday night shows, there'd be more put into it. Yeah, because I mean, look at Puebla. Look at that Saturday show. You mm-hmm. don't really think much of it. Nope. But they keep hyping it like it's like this big, innovative, different thing, and and it's like we can't even watch it. Nobody knows. They don't yeah. even show clips of it anymore. And actually, I think that's that's although that's pretty genius for I, them to do that, just because it makes see, you want to go see I it. I think it's smart. Because remember. Uh, I the, really would like to see the key some to, of to the key to Mexico years ago was so little was televised. Yeah, so people were hungry to see it. But see that. But now everything is televised. Yeah, that's the problem. Not everything is televised. <laughs> but everything's on YouTube or some, you know. The Saturday show isn't. It doesn't draw. No, see, not the, 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 what, what, their, their problem. Their problem is yeah. they think they think it's like the, if they televise everything, it's going to be um, or put it online. Mm-hmm. It's going to hurt attendance, but it's still not helping or hurting it's not it's doing not, anything but here's this, here's what I, I'm saying it's not that they're not showing everything but they show so yes, much yes it's a lot there's so much for people just that they could watch at home for that's free that's a lot of bad wrestling too yeah exactly it, well that's the thing is is yeah I can dig the Puebla but if I had to watch the Tuesday show and the Friday show yeah yeah I'm probably going to pick whichever, whichever show yes, is hot and that's what, that's what I mean it's, it's and I don't think I'd be I don't think in their, in their mind mm-hmm they don't understand that you're not going to watch every show. That's what I'm trying to get to. Yeah. They think you're not going to go to every show. Mm-hmm. I mean, I'm talking about somebody in Mexico. Yeah. They're thinking, okay, this guy's not going to go to all the shows because we're airing this show. Mm-hmm. So let's not air all these other yeah. shows. Now, you're talking about the promoter, though. Yeah. The wrestlers are another story. 
The wrestlers don't care. They're indifferent. See that? No, that's the thing. That's the thing. There's that, and that's what. Well, I, that's they actually the, want you to. They want more footage of their their matches online and stuff. But when they're working every single night, yeah, they're not going to go balls out no matter how much. I don't think they, and I don't. I don't think, and they're a lot of the guys. I don't think they think that. Mm-hmm. I don't think you, when you say they're not going balls out. I don't think they think some of them don't think that they are. I think they all, all think they're going all out. I don't think they ever. I don't think there's ever been a. If you go to these indie shows, I don't think you. If you asked, if we went to the show last last um, Sunday, mm-hmm. if you asked those guys who you looked thought maybe were mailing it in, they would tell you they were going all out. It's just your mind and your mm-hmm. a fan fan's perspective. You're trying to analyze why the match is so bad or why it's so well, just even, bad. No, no, no. Here's the thing. I don't think the match is bad. See. This is my, this is my hang up with. Or you think they're mailing it in, and sometimes it's not them. And, and, it's not, and you in know, their, in their, in their mind, they're just doing something to entertain the fans. Exactly. To them, that, it's just but entertainment. See, but see, that's the, that's the thing is, is you know, there's so much CML out there, and I hear so many people say, "Well, this sucks, this sucks, this sucks." Yeah. And to be honest, I don't think it's all that bad compared to other stuff. Yeah, it's tepid. But I don't know because other stuff. There's a lot of bad stuff. There is some bad stuff. I'm not saying that. You could watch Raw, and there's a lot of bad stuff on there too. And they they have. Oh, I think it really. Sucks. They have Raw, SmackDown, NXT, then they make oh, yeah. pay per view. So it's not. It's not. It, there's. Well, in that those, sense, it's apples and oranges. New Japan, the same thing. You could watch New but Japan what, World, I, and there's. But always, when I heard, you know, the reason I started watching Toyble is I want to see just how bad it is. And to be honest, I'd rather watch that than IWRG any day. Oh, because well, IW, IWRG is bad right now. No, I mean, that is a bad, bad show yeah. where you have green wrestlers working the crowd half the time. Yeah. And they're told to go forever. You know? No, that's a bad show. That is a bad yeah, show. Yeah. And it's it's made worse because the guys who film it are, are really bad. The TV show. Oh, yes, yes. They're bad. It's it's a bad show. But, but, but then you're also but, not but, watching. But, but then you're not also, you're also not watching the like the good matches from IWRG either. I've seen some good ones. I've what? seen some good ones. What have you watched that's good? It's been a while. Uh, From two thousand eight. <laughs> <laughs> no, I've seen I've seen some good stuff. Because there's a lot of bad stuff in I. Like lately, there's been a lot of bad stuff. No, I mean the reason I gave up on IWRG is. But you're talking about the opening matches. Like the For opening, opening matches, yes. those are horrible. Yeah. I even considering their opening. Yeah, matches. I know. And opening matches were as bad as the ones here in LA. <laughs> then were, Except that one yeah. ro- Rocket Boy Wilson. Oh, that Donnie guy's, Suarez match. That, that was, was good. Fun. That, that was, was fun. good. No, there's some bad ones. That was probably the best opening match I've seen here in LA. That was great. Of all the outside of PWG, absolutely outside of PWG, and I think Lucha Vaboom because I don't remember the Lucha Vaboom opening match. I think match. part of that and is... Lucha Vaboom was because I was distracted looking at all the women. <laughs> they could have. They could have had a, absolutely. Yeah, because I don't. I don't remember the opening match because they have like women dancing and doing shit like that. So and the like, opening match was good. I think the opening match in Lucha Vaboom was always it was, dancing. It was good. <laughs> Everything was pretty good, now, yeah. you know. But yeah, but um, but no, no, no. I, 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 and Lucha Underground opening match, but that's TV. That's different. That's TV, and yeah. it can be edited. If something and I think the wrong. opening match that we saw was on um, Pimpinella versus Pentagon. I think that's that right. Matter. That's yeah. right. Yeah. So, no, no, no. I, I, Triton was walking again, which was kind of surprising. Which was awesome. Yeah. And I think somebody like thought I meant Triton from Mexico, and I was like, dude, seriously. <laughs> This tree tone has been wrestling since the late seventies. Yeah, started out as, under the name Aspid. Did he never wrestled in Mexico? Did he? Because there, so. there was a tree tone. There was a tree tone. I Mexico, bet you there have been. There's several. been plenty of tree tones. Yeah, tritones. I think there's been a lot of yeah. tree tones. I think there was a tree tone in IWRG. At one probably, point too, so probably. When, when this tree tone in CML was named tree tone, there was one in yes. IWRG, and he got he got upset. Over the other tree tone, and somebody else got confused because I mentioned this tree tone. I was like, no, this one's tree tone from SoCal. The other one is perfectly quiet. And, and it's funny how everybody thinks somebody has a trademark on these. Yeah. You know, it's, yeah. it's like, so it's come like, on, you yeah. know. I can't, uh, no, I, I The was, show was for uh, Falcón de Oro, right? Yes. And who was the other guy? Acero Dorado Sr.? Sr. Uh, yeah, is he now, the dad of... Um, I don't... I don't think it is. I, I think, think it's it. more like a godfather type yeah, of cause thing. Yeah, because he didn't really... He, yeah, he's a guy he, he used to wrestle years ago on Hatko Plaza. He wrestled as Mr. Golden Iron. Uh-huh. And I don't know when he took the Acero Dorado, uh, you know, gnome de plume, but that's, you know, he took that and went with it. 
And Falcon de Oro is obviously Gil Ariano, and so appropriate that the homage was done to him uh, right across the street from where the gym used to stand uh-huh. on Clayla and Whittier Boulevard in East L.A. This was one of the most enjoyable times I've had in a long time. I, I saw the guy who first got me into a ring to train Lucha style, Chacal Rivera. Yeah, he, he, I mean, people who saw him uh, win the win promotion remember he that's made, right he made that's television. right he made tele- and I think he did he did some war, uh, some Tijuana shows too that made television yes also. he did yeah, yeah. Uh, I know he was a mainstay since the 70s I, I want to say since maybe 70s they look so much 70s. tinier when you see them in person to like Chacal River yes, yes. <laughs> although he might have he might have age, age mm. you, you kind of get smaller he was always a little dude he was? And, and and you probably heard us bring up the name Sammy Delgado before yeah, uh, who passed away a few years ago, unfortunately. But really wonderful guy. He was small compared to Chacal. Really, he's a good little worker, but I mean little. I mean he had these short legs. Uh, and, uh, wonderful guy, good worker. But uh, if those were short luchadors, not like these they were short minis well, and triple well, and CML. <laughs> absolutely, yeah. There were some little dudes. Yeah, but man, no. If you showed up and you worked your butt off. Uh, uh-huh. And you got used. They did, you know, most of the uh, promotions here in LA back then really didn't care if you're, you know, what your size was. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Chacal Rivera. Yeah, I remember he used to have that long hair and just uh, really good heel, really good trainer. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, I, even Plotino, who, you know, doesn't get overly excited about anything, he was the one who told me Chacal was there and he his eyes were wide yeah. and he's like Plot- I mean Chacal's here Chacal and yeah. I'm going no way I think it's the first time how, yeah well, okay. I, I think it's the first time a lot of people saw him in over 20 years wow yeah I, I think only Gil is the only one who's been in touch and with he's, him he's, he's living in LA or yeah he lives in the LA area wow. he, he actually worked at the garage with Gil and he just doesn't go to Lucha shows yeah, or I'm he, guessing he might have gone to like some random one. And he might have. Where people, you know, yeah. only a handful of people saw him or whatever. It's funny because a lot of the guys, when they kind of bow, There's a lot of Lucha shows here, by the way. <laughs> tons. Yeah, so. Tons. So it's possible. Especially on a Sunday, you'll yeah. probably have no problem. There's usually, I think show. on a weekend, there's usually like three or four it, in just that little area in LA, I mean. Because then you have San Diego, that part in, mm-hmm. <laughs> the part in between San Diego and LA that, that they've decide to run wrestling shows for oh, some reason yes Oxnard <laughs> Oxnard Oxnard where five people go to watch Lucha <laughs> I bet you I, and I bet and that's, you and that's not even including the American promotions too yes and I bet you that's discounting scores of shows we're not even aware of yeah, yeah. I, it's like it's like yeah cause sometimes I'll, I'll see Superboy like post a picture and it's like whoa when did that happen <laughs> yes, like, what yes. show was that cause it's not even like a show that like we, I think we're even getting flyers for those um, shows that are like random, like small shows where Mechanico's like the main event or whatever. Because he's promoting. Yeah, the show. but then but then you're not you're not getting these. But then there's even lower than that. Like there's like yes, I've seen like, them. Yeah, it's like what's no, going there on? there are several shows where. Uh, I think one of the dudes that open Mongol is on a show, and it's like. He's like in the third match or the fourth match. Like, whoa, that's too high. He's a big. He's, <laughs> yes, I know. So, he's but a there's, big guy and he tries. There's but. somebody else that we saw recently, and he's in the main event. I'm like, that dude's in the main event of the show. How good can this I've show? Seen those. Yeah, and he's, he's like an opening match guy. And it's like, whoa. Man. I'm almost scared to see what the arena's yeah. like. Uh, you can see them like just throw each other around. Like, that's, <laughs> that's if it's a good. If yeah, that's, yeah. That's on a best case yeah, scenario, right. probably. Because uh, some of these old guys are still wrestling, and they got to be somewhere. Yeah, well, oh, here, here's the, well, one. I really dug the Piloto Nuclear, Piloto Suicida little feud that they were having. That was cool. I think they should run that feud. They should, uh, su, su, you know, Piloto Nuclear, uh, he's another one who is one of Tritone's contemporaries. Uh-huh. I mean, I think he's my age or a little older. I mean, that guy's still in really good shape. Yeah. I mean, I was getting his ass handed to him. In the- wow, you're not kidding. <laughs> yeah, I was like, holy that crap. finishing move. Uh, 
You're like, I don't remember it now. <laughs> it, was, it, 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 it was like a jujitsu move. That yeah. Oh, we choked them out, right? Yeah. yeah. I, I just thought, damn, that's pretty uh, gnarly. I, I mean, that. I mean, it, you that's, know, it's a work, but it looks so effective. It it, looked, it's it's weird because I think like when you were talking about lucha, the good and bad of it. Mm-hmm. Those matches, the main events with the alley fuckers, who are Acero Dorado, and this mm-hmm. this week was Acero Dorado, uh, Piloto Suicida, and I. Oh, uh, it was a uh, Principe Indu was teaming with yes. them. Yes, those matches are fucking wild, and I bet you if you put that, if you if you showed that to some fans, they would be like, "I don't get it. It's all like just guys beating each other up throughout mm-hmm. the building. It looks it looks crazy, but when you're there, it is insane because you're trying to you're running for your life practically. <laughs> if you're if you're not in the bleachers, you're running for you, your life. Yeah, you do not want a front row seat. Yeah, so it's like. So, like, somebody might see that, and that's why, like, when you're talking about Puebla, I mean, it might be, look boring to us, but I'm sure that person watching, like, sitting there, they probably found it far more entertaining than we did. And that's what I think that when mm-hmm. I watch the Alley Fuckers matches, because it's like... Yes, yes. They're so crazy, but it's like, I enjoy this stuff. It's like... It's, it's I like, do, too. And it's especially like, they're not doing They're not doing any, like, crazy dives. They're not doing, like, this... They're not doing triple, like, 630 splashes or... Or they're not doing like they're not doing like fancy mat work. It's just like oh, pull off his belt and beat the shit they're out of the guy. They're actually doing something pretty unique. Yeah, you couldn't, you couldn't call it hardcore wrestling. It's not. <laughs> and not you know, the point of being hardcore wrestling. I mentioned that one match that I watched where um, that guy fa- like when he tried to do Brio Dorada and he landed on his head on the ring apron. Yes. You know the tactic they did to like get the crowd back into it. Or the they guy, made it look he was going to take the, him out. No, no, Wait, the guy one? the guy took off his belt and just started whipping guys. <laughs> yes. <laughs> while that guy oh, was while yeah, they were yeah, checking yeah. on that guy, you yes. didn't watch that match. That match is I think you'd have to like know the person to you'd have to buy the DVD or like know the person to get it. Or you could download it. I, I think it's. Wait, I thought I saw all the matches. You didn't watch that match. I'm talking about the AIW match from the the with Zima Ion and those guys. Not the not at the show. Oh, okay. I'm talking gotcha. about the DV- video. I'm talking about the video. I'm sorry. I, I'm, talking I, I the, talking I'm talking about the. I'm talking about the strap. I'm talking about when when they, because you know how they always do the strap thing. Yeah. It does, they do it. They do it no matter what. No, you know what I thought you were referring to was when Jaguar Day. Oh no, no. Then we'll get to that one. In that a bit. was that was yeah. a great way to yeah. break up the crap. Yeah, we'll talk about that because they they actually did it differently because yeah. in this match they the guy was knocked out. Okay. What what they, what they did in Jaguar Day? They went to the pin right away. Yeah. But like in this match, since it was just like seven minutes into it, and they found out that the guy was okay, so what they did was Scott A, Scott A Jr. took off his belt and just mm-hmm. started whipping guys. <laughs> like he started whipping Zima Ion and Ambandolero. What they did in Jaguar de Oro's match was like, so you want to tell what that happened with Jaguar de Oro? Yeah, Jaguar de Oro. He uh, ja- Jaguar de Oro is a guy who you know he's a decent wrestler, but is. An amazing he condition. He's, he's like, also old. He's also older. He's, he's older, older but uh, Superboy was telling me he's in like Bob Backlund condition. Really? Like this guy. Well, he looks in great shape. I he mean, is. He's a guy we've seen, like, well, you knew him before, like, ages, but I remember seeing I him. I worked with him 2004, once, and, 2003 in uh, Paraguay. That's right. And I worked with him, and oh my God. It's, he's one of these guys who likes to work hard. Yeah. And, and I think that's I, what I think that's what happened in the match. Because. Mm-hmm. Tell him what happened. Like, well, what happened is is he hit the top turn buckle to do a you know straight plancha on yeah. somebody, and very unusual for him, uh, he lost his balance and jumped back down onto the mat. And so, so you I hear fans he, going like, like oh yeah. So I think he felt silly, so he decided to do a, a traditional tope. But I think his mind fucked with him because you mess up. Yeah. You really have to clear your mind if you're going to do... Yeah. And you have to make sure that the guy knows what you're going to do too, right? Yeah, yeah. But but I I, I think the guy... The guy knew. The guy yeah, knew. the guy knew to catch him. Uh, but I think, you know, he had like a... You know, his brain froze. You know, yeah. you, you mess up, you feel embarrassed. Yeah. So, so his foot caught in the ropes and... You know, he just fell head first down on the floor. Yeah. Or, or did, he hit the, did he hit the side of the mat? I'm not... I think he landed head first. Yeah. But, but the guy caught him. Like, the guy caught him more or less, but he still hit. Yeah. The guy did the best yeah. he could. Yeah. Sombra Infernal. Yes. So, he's lying there, and it's pretty clear he's... Yeah, because they have the ref comes over. <laughs> this is the only thing in L.A. The ref comes over, then somebody else comes over. 
Then mm-hmm. Superboy's kids come over yeah. to check on him. Then, like, some random fans come over to check on them. So and then, all of a sudden, you have, like, ten people yes, checking yes. on them. Security guard checking on them. So then the other security guard, or somebody, I don't know if it's a security guard. I think it was the, the skinny security guard. Yes, it was. Finally told them to move out to give them air or something. And, and, but, but people are still crowding Yeah, around. yeah, yeah. And so, uh, Somber Infernal runs through the crowd, like, with a chair, like he's going to take out yeah, like Jack Gordon tomorrow. Yes. And, and it, it, it looked really cool because one, Somer Infernal is a... Is he was a, the guy we thought was going to be great. Remember? We thought he was going to be great when yes. we first saw him. Yes. We saw him like in one of Bart's shows. He is such a great heel. Yeah, he had the great look. He looked like oh, a, totally. a Negro Casas type, like a Spanto Jr. type of look. Yes! yes. And, and when he went after Jaguar de Oro, it... It looked real. Like, yeah. It looked like he was going after him. Yeah. And uh, but no, he was he was making the crowd just part. He yeah. gave he's giving poor Jaguar some air. Yeah, you know? yeah. But they went to the pin right away. Like they got they did they, they did. did the double pin on the Chivos for that match. They did. Yeah, but the no, main that was well covered. Yeah. actually. <laughs> the 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 one thing about the main event, um, I ended up talking to Principe Indu after the show, mm-hmm. and so he asked me, "Hey, so how what you think of the match?" Uh, first of all, I was shocked he spoke per. Good English, which you oh, learned from. Because you yes. never talked. I never. Before. Well, because yes. when we would go, all he would say was "Hi, how are you doing?" But even he wouldn't even talk to you. Like he was just like, "Hey, yeah," like a little he's just bit. Just a laid back. Yeah, guy. so very nice. So then he's back. like, he, so so he's like, "Hey, good seeing you again." And I'm like, "Oh, hey, I enjoyed your match." Like, what'd you think of the match? I go, uh, "It was good." I go, "I go, you were like the calm one in the match." And he's like, "Yep, I had someone had to be because the match was crazy." Like they, and then um, at the end, Acero Dorado starts. Um, Arguing with uh, Superboy's wife, if you remember the. I don't remember that part. Yeah, they start arguing. I didn't see that. Yeah, they start <laughs> arguing during the match. Like they start going back and forth, and Super- um, Asura Dorada tells tells them to kick her out of the ring, the arena. And stuff oh, like, that's oh. who they were referring yeah, to. Yeah, yeah. So. Oh my God, how funny! Yeah. Oh, that's yeah. It was funny. a good show. I mean, that was a really good show, yeah. especially for ten bucks. Yeah, oh, yeah, ten bucks too. Can't beat that. Yeah, you know the the open- opener. Would you could the open openers? That. Eh. Uh, Let's just put it this way: it was worse than Puebla. <laughs> it was worse than Puebla. Yeah, that's why when you say it's horrible, I mean. No, no, I, I, actually, actually, I, actually, different levels of horrible. Actually, this is what I I think what you said hits upon what the point I was trying to get across. Um, and then I'll I'll, I'll counter that point yeah. across. <laughs> oh, in fact, cut some of the stuff you're saying out. It was it was we got into a clusterfuck. Yeah, thing. yeah. We were like a six woman tag match for a little while. We'll ago. just pretend that got caught in the battery dying part. That sounds good. Yes, yeah. I like that. I like it. I guess I guess the point I'm trying to get across is so many people who see so much wrestling. Yeah, and so they'll see, they'll see a show like Puebla, and. You know, I it, it's, it sounds like something I would never want to see. Yeah. But then I watch it, and I actually enjoy it. It's yeah, not, it's not the greatest show. I yeah, you're, it's not it's not the level of the bad wrestling that you're you know when exactly yeah, exactly. Yeah. And on the other hand, it's not. Uh, I won't name. I won't. I won't mention the name, but Doctor Lucha knows who we would be referring to when it comes to bad wrestling. Absolutely. <laughs> like, but it's not that bad. Level. Untrained wrestling. Yes. It's yeah. Not like level. like. For all the things I was saying about the women's match, oh, I, that was bad. <laughs> that was bad. That was bad. But, but I mean, they desperately need somebody who can lead the rookies. It's and it's, 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 it's 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 hard to like when you when you watch a full show and you say it's bad. You might not mean it's the entire show that's bad. It just made it feel absolutely, bad. Absolutely, absolutely. There's a couple of matches where you just hate it, and then you're like, oh yeah, but that one match was good. You're like, and then it's like, it's too late. You already said it was bad. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's you can't take it back. No, I can't take it back. It was a bad. It, it was not a good match, but it looked like they were putting effort into it. They were trying. Yeah. I mean, in my opinion, the women need need somebody who can lead matches because because it looks like they're relying on each other to lead the match until Zuxis comes in, yeah. and takes over. Yeah. But but like it's what you were saying. I think as a point, I was trying to get across. You're a fan. You're in Puebla. You're going there. You're probably going to dig the show. Yeah. You're going to enjoy it. Yeah. And. It's hard for, like, the rest of us to be, like, 
Uh, well, I don't want to watch that. Like Raw, you know, there's fans who are huge Raw fans. Oh yeah, yeah. And, watch like, all and you're like, and you're like, dude, this shit's horrible. And I don't get it. Yeah. <laughs> Impact has fans. I mean, come on. <laughs> I just told you the whole story about the. I'd love to be a fly on the wall yeah. uh, on people who love to watch Impact. I, yeah. You know, speaking, no, actually, I, I, I love to be me in there, just staring at them. Speaking like, of a good show, Lucha Underground, the last two weeks has been great. Yes. Because they've actually had Brian Cage. They oh Brian Cage versus Matanza Cueto. Really, this past Wednesday was really good. Actually, I bet that was really cool. Cage, um, while well, Cage beat um, Ch- destroyed Chavo the previous week mm-hmm. to win the Gift of the Gods, he called out um, Matanza Cueto. That match was really good. That was like just like a two, you know, like that a, a Terry Gordy Doctor Death oh, Steve damn. Williams type of match where it's like two big guys just beating the, just going at each other. And you know what? That match proved your point about Brian Cage and Lucha Underground. A far better technical than a than a Rudo. Isn't he? He was doing topes and doing. He would did. A, I think he did a tope or a dive. He did a dive for sure. That's the amazing thing is you see this guy who you picture just a steroid body doing power moves, and he moves like a freaking dancer, man. And the that, entire, that's amazing. Like everything they did. Like like remember when I, when we were talking about it like last year. <laughs> it's like last year <laughs> yes. um, when we were talking about how Pentagon Junior. They captured him as a Rudo. Breaking arms, and he came off as a badass. Yes. Whereas Brian Cage, this guy, yeah, you want to boo him? I can't boo a guy who's like getting assaulted as he's walking through a parking lot, yes. and not, and he's not yes. feeling, he's not feeling any pain. You know, that's actually like, oh, that's pretty badass. He should be a superhero. Yeah. And that's, that's what a great it, way to put and it. And that's that's I think that's what they're I, that's what I would do with him. I mean, he's 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 awesome. So I it mean, sounds like they're getting on the boat with. Well, him. you know, I mean, next that's... week they'll change it. They'll switch him over to. <laughs> no, it's Lucha Underground. They're scatterbrain. Um, the trios <laughs> match. They had um they had the title change mm-hmm. where Johnny Mundo, PJ Black, and Jack Evans. Jack Evans has been great. This guy is like as a heel, he is amazing. Well, I want to see that. I, I as love a Rudo, a heel. I so love so then heel. they won the belts because he hit the he hit he hit Dragon Azteca Junior with a chair. Mm-hmm. So Johnny Mundo got the pen. Last this past Wednesday, um, they 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 gave um, they had a rematch, and Jack at the end of the match, they end up lose the the Technicals Prince Puma um, Dragon Azteca Junior Rey Mysterio lose. Because um, the ref catches Prince uh, Prince Puma kicking, um, I think it was Mundo, in the nuts. Mm-hmm, yeah. So they got DQ'd. So then Prince Puma is really upset, mm-hmm. and like everybody's trying to calm him down. And so you hear Jack Evans, "Hey, you need to calm down." <laughs> you just hear me like, yeah. like he's just yelling at him. Like he yells like throughout his match. You just got to go through. Like you got to look for the. I, I don't know if he does it in the one match that that they have up on YouTube. Mm-hmm. But his whole thing is like he screams at the fans. So, like, he screams out, like, I'm the baddest bitch in the building, or stuff like that. He just, like, yells out stuff, like... Oh, and when he says stuff like that, it just comes off as so authentic. Yes, yes. I mean... I don't know if it would work. I- I've always felt that as in Mexico, he could have been a, a very good, sympathetic baby face. Yes. Because he's small, and, and, and he ha- he's very athletic. And the chicks dig him there. Yeah, so I don't know if him being a Rudo over there... He was a Rudo at one point. Well, that's like the one time I... Saw- but I don't know the type of Rudo that he's in Lucha Underground where he's screaming at people. I don't know if it would be acceptable over there. I think he'd probably get like... Yeah. Well, I think I think he'd probably get a couple of people pointing guns at him. <laughs> like him. I got to tell you a story, another story. Uh, mm-hmm. um, Polvo de Estrellas told a story of... Um, I think... Did I mention the last podcast? I know. I no, right? So. Uh, where he... They, they, did, um, they did this feature where they interviewed all these exoticos mm-hmm. where they told stories about how they came out of the closet to their family mm-hmm. or, in, or in the business and stuff like that and they were talking about all this other stuff and Polo Estrellas was talking about um, you know the spot where they kiss a, a fan yes <laughs> Polo Estrellas kissed the wrong fan at a show <gasps> this guy decides to pull out a gun on him holy shit so um, Polo Estrellas is like telling a story of like yeah this guy wanted to kill me only it, had it not been for Tiffany this is one of the positive things where Tiffany like <laughs> Like you could talk about how bad she was as a wrestler. She seems like a nice person too, by the way. I don't. I don't want to. This is one yeah. of the weird things. Like you talk about, oh, this guy sucks and stuff like that. But he's a really nice person. You know, it's, and it's frustrating because you can see that they are trained. It's just they're not. Yeah, they're just not it, good. You know, they're, they're just not, not good. It. And so um, he said, Tiffany pulled him away from the guy and calmed the guy down. Wow. But he's like, if Tiffany wasn't there, he probably would have been killed or something. He's like, I don't know what would have happened. Now, I'll say Tiffany could probably make me. Put my gun down. Yeah, yes, yeah, yes, yeah. Whatever you want. Well, to. well, back then, you know, she, yeah. was, she, she was younger too. So, but it's like I, I just, I just thought it was funny. Like, and wow. that's what you think about Jack Evans. I mean, Mexicans 
we've been to lucha shows where guys get kind of a little more uh, upset. I, I wasn't there, but there was a Compton show that Sakosi was on, and um, they get rowdy. They get rowdy. Uh, and as I recall it, I think Psychosis. I can't remember Psychosis like slapped him or something. The fan was going too far. Yeah. So the fan runs out and he comes back in with a gun. <laughs> and everybody calms him down. And they're uh, just, you know, as he calms down, <laughs> the final verdict. Okay, you can stay and watch the show, but you have to give us the gun. <laughs> <laughs> and he gave them the gun! Yes, awesome. What, I know I told this story on Slam Stamp, but I don't know if I told it on Lucha World. The one about what? Had the had the two Hatco Plaza riots I saw. I don't know if you had. Um, in fact, uh, one of the guys that you know was part of Gil's the Falcon de Oro tribute the other night was this guy Os Negro. You know, tall guy. He had a blue mask with the you know the. Uh, he didn't wrestle, right? No, he didn't wrestle. Okay. No, he yeah, he's retired. And mm. He is uh, one of the guys I used to see at Hatco Plaza, and there was a program where he and Dr. Morat they teamed is when Dr. Morat was a lot smaller. <laughs> <laughs> I think I saw him like towards the end or something. Yeah, toward the end. Yeah. And he was actually still good but more just in a heel role. Yeah. But back then he was a worker. Not as a wrestler. I saw him at a legend show, I think. Oh, okay. Because yeah. in the 90s... He saw, actually, he might have wrestled. He might have. Yeah, yeah. No, in the 90s he would still wrestle and uh, he, he didn't do what he used to do but he was still very good. He's a great heel and yeah. could still get the job done, but when, like the early 80s, he was really good. Uh, and they were wrestling babyface team of Centea Roja and, God, was it Peloto Sus? No. Peloto Nuclear. Peloto Nuclear or a guy called Angel de Muerte. I'll have to find it. I know somewhere I probably have it written yeah. down. But they were doing a program with, you know, the, one Sunday. They just went balls out. I mean, and... They ended it with topes that landed into the crowd, uh, which probably sounds mild today, but back then they used topes more sparingly. And yeah, uh, you know, the match the week before the blow off ended like in a no contest where they all just trashed each other, and so the big blow off match is the next week, and they're just. They were getting great heat, and uh, I think people really expected that the baby faces were going to go over in the end. But Dr. Morte and Ostrara went over, you know, very clean and just very, really destroyed the faces. And so after the match, they're walking around the ring with their arms around each other, just like, yeah, we, you know, we're bad, taunting that people are throwing everything they have at them and it was the first time I ever saw fans throwing lit cigarettes oh, at the wrestlers. <laughs> and then one fan just and then this was not far from me I was I was in the same section and one fan just swings at uh, Dr. Muerte and <gasps> misses him by this much yeah but that was that was enough for Dr. Muerte, Muerte. <laughs> just popped him between the horns <laughs> the guy went the guy went flying and then like uh, several people jumped off from Muerte, then Os Negro jumps then. Yeah. And I guess this happened more than once because in less than 20 seconds, almost all the wrestlers from the dressing room ran out to intervene. Yeah. And a lot of them had their masks, bare, like the masked wrestlers, yeah, just... barely on, half tied. Yeah. And they didn't mess around. They wailed into the fans. They didn't just say, let's break it up. They, they, they... I could see that happening with the guys here, like uh, Sarah Dorado. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yeah. exactly. And I just, you know, because I had heard so many stories of on American shows when fans get unruly like that, it doesn't end well for them. Yeah. So, uh, you know... Where were you in this whole little fight I was very nearby I was, you were walking I was sitting back watching a fascination yeah. I, I, I didn't get too close yeah. but, and then it all it, it all ends and the guy who started the whole thing he had like this this kind of you know silky button up shirt that was ripped <laughs> and he's fuming and I'm thinking aren't they going to kick him out and he's just like angry and then he sits down 
yeah. and all the other fans are calmed down. Some fans are walking around, kind of like nursing their, you know, nobody was badly hurt. And they, they just didn't... announced the next match. <laughs> yeah, well, they, it was like I think I think they had like an impromptu intermission. Uh huh. And then I see the guy get up, and he looks toward the heels dressing room. And in fact, Charcal Rivera was standing at the uh, dressing room door. He wasn't working that night, but just. And the guy walks over there, and I'm saying, "Uh oh, what's going to happen?" And I see him feverishly talking to Charcal Rivera. Uh-huh. And you could tell Charcal's calming him. And it's almost like he's saying, "Yes, yes, I know you're angry, but you, you can't just go hitting wrestlers." Yeah. And then the guy sit down, and he watched the rest of the show with his ripped up <laughs> shirt and. Then the next time was about a year later. I can't remember what started this riot, but uh, I remember it was Jesse Garcia versus uh, Principe Joel in like a uh, hair match. It was a really lame match. Yeah. Uh, but it got good heat. It got. You over. see them again, and they're like, "Oh, you called our our match lame." <laughs> oh, <laughs> on the God. on the Lutro podcast, <laughs> <laughs> episode fifty eight. They have it. Which, which was uh, which? Well, I think it's because Hoel was green because he actually turned out to be a really yeah. Because he was around for a long time. Yeah, he it? turned out to be yeah. really good. But uh, uh, and Jesse Garcia was a good worker too. But I can't remember what spurred it. But we were in the front row, and with us was Doctor Jerry Graham. Uh-huh. And it was when I just started training to uh, uh, to wrestle. And, uh, in fact, it was in that same section where just a big fight breaks out and all the wrestlers are coming and Doc lights up like a child on Christmas morning. Like, oh my god, I haven't seen anything like this in ages! Yeah. But this is beautiful! You know, and, and you know, and, you know, and the fans are starting to wail into fans, too. And he says, this is great! And he looks at me and says, Kurt, time for your next lesson! And I'm going, what's that, Doc? And he takes out his wallet... And he takes out a blade. Oh, Just Kurt, time to get you to get your first gig. And I, I, I had heard about Doc gigging people before. So you saw me run like I was Carl Lewis, man. <laughs> I, I booked out of there so fast. Jeez. And Doc was just walking towards me, his big grin, like, "Come here, Kurt." <laughs> we haven't had anything happen at shows that we've been. No, to. we haven't. Other and, than and, you know, you have one person maybe like getting upset and stuff, but it's not. Oh, totally, totally. And I remember because I, I think a lot of this show, this show had a lot. It was a, a, a legend kind of show, so there was everybody was family practically. It was. I mean, Related let's, put, to let's put it this way: they were even cheering for the KKK. Yeah, KKK was there, and Kurt again refused to take a picture with them. Actually, I, I... You did? No, I took a picture with Ramon and Ajeda. Who's that? That's the KKK. Oh, without Without his mask. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and that was the dark-skinned one. It wasn't the light-skinned one? Exactly. I, I love that there's one who... How come you didn't take a picture with the light-skinned one and have him smile with the KKK and the... For those who don't know, <laughs> the yes. KKK consists of a dark-skinned Mexican dude and a light-skinned Mexican dude, Almost right? Almost albino white. Yeah, skin. practically albino. He's like, he looks white. He's yeah. white. He's, so... The, the white one lives in El Paso now. Mm-hmm. But these two guys, they were hoods. They're the KKK, were hoods. They threw tortillas during their match, which I, I finally got a tortilla at a lucha show. <laughs> I can finally say I caught a tortilla at a lucha show. So these guys, they, we see them without their masks. One of the, 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 the really Mexican dude tells us he hates Mexicans. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so we thought that was funny. And he so, said it so politely too. So then he starts telling us a story about. Um, did we ask him about the about the dental crowns? I can't remember if we. Or did he just bring that I up? I think he brought it up because I remember when. He oh, because you were crowns. asking where he was at, and then he was t- where, where where he was from or, or where he was living right yes. now. Yes. And then he brought up how it's his brother, right? Brothers in El Paso. In El Paso. Downey. So then um, he starts saying that um, he actually they the KKK. I didn't. I didn't even realize this. I guess they did it when they became the KKK. Mm-hmm. They had dental crowns and uh, the and their front teeth, and they had the KKK on them. Yeah, so when they smile, you see, see, K- see the KKK. Yes, yes. So this guy tells us that he took them off. Um, he had um, one of the local... Enrique Medina. One of, who's a, one of the... A dentist. A great wrestler. A great too. wrestler, too. And, I mean, this dude, 60s, whatever, however old he was, the last legend show we went to was amazing. Amazing in the, in the shape. Ring. That guy's in amazing um, condition. So then... I go, we go inside to say goodbye to everybody, and I see this one dude, uh, this white uh, albino looking uh, Mexican dude. I mean, dude. you could tell he was Mexican, but yeah, he was he, albino. Yeah, because he, he was dressed like a cowboy, like yeah. you, you could tell, like a ranchero, a norteño or whatever. So um, I'm thinking, oh, this must be one of those other masked guys. And then I see him smile, 
and I see the KKK. Yes. He still had the dead tomorrow. <laughs> He's living in El Paso with the... Well, though, there are parts of El Paso where you could get away with that, I'm guessing. Maybe he's trying to get on Jackass or something. And they're but I thought back. that was great. How, how do you still have that? I thought... You know when he said that? I thought they had a grill. You know, like the, the stuff that the, the rappers have yes, when they take yes, it off? Yes, absolutely. Thought, oh, but they actually have those... They were wearing that back in the 80s. They had those stuck to their teeth. Yes. I... When I first, like, formally met them, that was the... Uh, oh, my God. That's hilarious. Yes, yes. And they went around every day with it. I'm amazed they didn't get Yes. There. I want I want to hear stories about that. Like they they didn't that, that guy I, he it would have been interesting if we knew him a little better just to get more out of him. But it's like I didn't know enough about the KKK. And I'd probably tell us more. Right? Yeah, I, he's, he's actually he's, he's actually, very actually a very nice guy. Yeah, he's yeah. very talkative. And it's funny and it's funny hearing him saying I hate Mexicans. Yes, I, I, hate. I told him, oh, that's okay. I hate white people. Yeah, and, I, I said I said I said there's a lot to hate. <laughs> <laughs> Which made Dan. But the, but the funniest part, funniest part is Lou. he's actually one of the kindest guys you'd ever be. Yeah. I mean, he's a very, you know, very nice guy. Uh, yeah, you know, I was surprised because I, I, it's so weird. I see Triton. I mean, he was at the Arena Paraguayo shows. I think he might have been one of the first luchadors that actually like talked to me like at, yes. at the shows. So every time I would see him, he would greet me, and I'd be like, "How is it going?" But I always remembered Triton, and. The ma- unmasked Triton but I never could connect both yes. of them so I would see Triton and say oh Triton if he said hi to me I'd be like oh it's Triton saying hi to me but then when I would see him without the mask I, thought, I would think oh it's this guy I see him at all the lucha shows how's he going but I never connected like this guy could be wrestling and I would never yes. know I would never know so I see him and, and he's like hey how's it going I was like oh how's it going been a while how are you doing he's like I'm doing good and it's like I didn't even think oh dude how are you doing did you just have this serious Coming back uh, on back Well, injury. that was what was incredible because the last, you know, I, I feel bad saying this, the last time I saw him was over a year ago at the Benefit show. I saw his daughter had a Triton <clears throat> tattoo on there. In fact, she had that done right before the Benefit show. Oh, like, really? She said, she even told me, like, like, yeah, uh, I had to do it behind my dad's back. He, he would have had a... Yeah. He would have been like... so mad, but, but he, he I, once she showed it to him, I guess he, he just melted, so... Yeah. But, uh... He, he is the nicest guy and when we saw him at that show I, I mean he it didn't look good yeah he was like in a the, like I don't think it was a wheel I don't know if it was a he wheelchair he was like strapped in it looked like uh, yeah it looked like something was he was barely mobile yeah. and it, it was I mean I mean he was still very optimistic but I could tell he was tired and I uh, uh, I mean when I first went out because I saw him just as family was getting out of the car so I went to say hi and I I guess I wasn't prepared because I'd never seen him look unenergetic yeah and, yeah because uh, he's full, one of the nice happiest dudes I, oh totally the yeah, nicest totally. guy uh, yeah nicest guy uh, and yeah if I saw him like that I actually almost lost my composure I <laughs> kept it together I yeah. would like I would like to make him feel better yeah but my god when we saw him what I mean, I'm just in awe of the way he's coming. Yeah, back. when they said Triton was back, I'm like, I even, I even walked to the other side just to see if it was really him. Like, holy crap! Yeah, was I mean, him? he has that. I think it's like that four prong cane. Yeah, but he gets around well. I mean, yeah, in, well, it's, it's coming off a of back injury, a major yeah. like yeah. neck. Yeah, like, neck injury. Yeah. I mean, my God! I mean, I, I'm just in awe of this guy. Yeah, you know. So I bet that was. Alisco still looked good, also in the ring. That guy gets younger. Yes, every day. I know. It's it's this. If he was in Mexico, this guy would be like still like revered as a legend. He would definitely. And I think here, it's, I think here they kind of just oh he's 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 Jalisco, he's a wrestler, but it's not it's not at the level in Mexico where that's like oh Jalisco exactly. Mm. I think and he's not wrestling as often either. So. Not as often, and you know. It's taking care of himself. If it was a Mexican, he'd probably wrestle against like Black Terry and all those guys. He probably knows all those guys. Black, Terry. he probably knows he like probably does early Black Tor- Terry well, see, and all those guys. When he stories. was wrestling in Mexico, that would have been like I want to say seventy eight, seventy nine. Yeah, Kato Kung Lee. Yeah, Kung Fu, yeah. Nero Casas. He knew all those guys when they first started out. Totally, I he, I he mean, probably could tell you stories about them training in Arena Mexico. I'd love that. to. Oh man, I'd love to sit down. I'm and telling you, we got to interview him. I, I'd like him that. and his his family, his lovely family. <laughs> That's right. Not yeah. only is he a handsome man, but his entire, his entire family, family is very that family has great genes. Yeah. Every, all, all the kids are just yeah. very good looking. I'm yeah. telling you, you got to set that up. <laughs> talk, talk to Superboy. For your benefit, right? For <laughs> yeah, I candy. We'll be talking. Hey, yeah. uh, <laughs> what's going on over here? 
Yeah. If you uh, watch Lich Underground, you know what I'm yeah. talking about. <laughs> <laughs> and well, and that and that's that's the interesting thing is, uh, while the fans dig some of the you know and even know some of the legends, yeah, uh, it's the guys, it's the other wrestlers who really idolize them, like Superboy. He often talks. The two I hear him talk about the most are Al Marietta. No, three. Al Marietta, Cool Cat, uh, and um, Jalisco. Mm. Oh yeah. Well, yeah. Cool. Yeah, but I mean, but, you know, I mean, here, here's Superboy, who's done, you know, accomplished far more than almost anybody, but he still holds those guys up yeah. as icons, which is cool. I think that's yeah. really neat. Now, speaking of Cool Cat, what about Wildcat? <laughs> Did you see my Facebook post? Yeah, I know I saw it. it was oh funny. God, I'm not gonna let that. Yeah. If if Kurt Kurt, if, if you're listening to this and you want to meet Kurt, just be warned he'll probably forget who you what you look like the following the following week. <laughs> yeah, I must I must stick our good friend Rogelio Garcia for Roger Fandalucha. <laughs> That's right, yeah. Roger Fandalucha. Yeah. Uh. I mistook him for our other friend, Wildcat Cario, and uh, yeah, how you I, I told, I how told, you could how you could not tell them apart? It was well, because they're the same height. And it was dark too. So. No, they're the same height. Roger's taller though. Only about a foot taller. <laughs> <laughs> that was funny when he. When no, that, he, that's a typical. Uh, vandal, that was one of the funnier like. That was that's a typical yeah. Vandal Drum and Space Cadet moment yeah. and. I, I wasn't going to bring it up, but then you posted it on Facebook. It was like, too, oh, my no, goodness. it's too good. It's too good. No, I... Uh, no, uh, it's not the first time I made a fool out of myself. It won't be the last, and... This is a three-hour I, I, I go by the... <laughs> well, well, uh, well, well, part of it will, will fade. Yeah. Uh, to quote the late officer William Obenheim... If anybody's going to make a fool out of me, it's going to be me. <laughs> and with me, I'm going to take it and run with it as long as I can. <laughs> so what do we got scheduled for the next couple of weeks? Just uh, going to UIPW? Uh, UIPW, Montebello, June 11th. June 11th, that should be a fun that show. That should be a really good show. Both main, event, main event is Caristico versus Volador versus Mysterioso Jr., the local one. Not the local the, Mysterioso Not the Jr. one from... Not the one that eats yogurt. <laughs> you know, the, the Ray the Yogurt. Um, I think there's something else. Oh, Flyer's going to be on the show. That's right. That's right. Um, so we, and, get, and we could ask him about to give us some stories about Volador Jr. I'm sure that would please Volador Jr. That'd be awesome. Yeah. I think there's some other matches that are... Well, the Superboy families are, yeah, aren't they? Yeah, yeah. That's always fun to see. We still haven't seen Steve Payne versus Teddy Hart live, you know? No, I really hope I get to yeah, meet Teddy, Car- Teddy Hart and his yeah, cat someday. Teddy Hart. That's what I want to... Not even the match. I just want to meet yeah, Teddy Hart and the cat and get a photo op. I know he did an interview a few times, like with somebody else, but it's like yeah, I don't know. I want to. I, I want to interview him more. I think the people that interview him don't really ask him about AAA. They just want to know the the crazier stuff. I'd be more curious about the lucha and his experience in Mexico and stuff like that. That would be good because I, especially if not a lot of people are asking him about it. Yeah, that's fill in the blanks. Yeah. That's you know. Because I don't really, I don't really care about him being crazy. Actually, I do. <laughs> Steve Payne would be interesting too, but I mean, he would be. Yeah, he would be. Yeah, I uh, speak to him in Spanish the entire time. Oh, did you see um, the UIPW show? Um, Teddy was in that match with Steve Payne and uh, Brian Cage, and uh, at the um, that dude that used to wrestle in MPW who went to WWE, Judas Draven. Yes, yes. He did a run in to help t- uh, to help Steve Payne. No way. And they attacked Teddy Hart. But hold on, um, Rush made the save. For Teddy Hart, so then Rush su- suggested he-, he and Teddy Hart team up. No way! Yeah. Oh my God! Against Steve Payne and Judas Draven. Wow. I'm not really. I'm not that. I'm not that sure about that Judas guy. But still, just Rush and Teddy. But Rush and Teddy Hart, just the, oh my God. The, 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 the angriest guy and the weirdest guy. <laughs> although, although if you think about Ingobernable, Ingobernable, Teddy Hart kind of fits that description. Of what an ingobernable yeah, should be. I guess it would. And he wouldn't be any worse than Pierrot or La Mascara. Yeah, I guess the only problem... And that cat would be perfect. The, the cat would be great. The cat and Rush and Teddy Hart together. Oh, that'd be awesome. 
that's got to be a picture we somebody gets. Yeah, I do. I yeah. really want a photo off of the cat. Yeah, big time. And big you got to get Teddy Hart just because the cat would be just the cat. Yes, yes. You gotta have Teddy Hart, Teddy Hart holding the cat. And I love it. If I remember right, it's a really big cat. Yeah, he he. That's he, he, awesome. Every time he takes a picture, it's very serious with the cat. Like, <laughs> like, like, yes, like yes. the cat, the cat and. Won't let him smile. Yes, yeah. The cat and the, and Teddy are very serious. <laughs> oh, oh, uh, uh, slam and stand. Rhett respect. Ryan Doyle uh, posted a meme. Uh, it was a photo of uh, Roddy Piper, uh, Bret Hart. Uh, I can't remember who the third guy was, but then Virgil was with him. Oh, jeez. And on the meme says, uh, Virgil saying to them, "Okay, guys, that'll be twenty dollars each." <laughs> so I suggested to him and Bix. That uh, uh, for for those uh, for those of you who didn't listen to the old Slam and Stan, uh, Virgil made certain that uh, Ryan Doyle bought a photo from him. Uh, Brian, uh, yeah, Ryan that wrestle gonna, reunion. Yeah, Ryan was gonna walk away and just say, "Oh yeah, I'll, I gotta go get money uh, money from the ATM," and he was just gonna walk he walked away. with him to the ATM. Yeah, Virgil followed him to the ATM to make sure he got the twenty dollars. And, and wasn't stuff. there some big wrestler there that? Kind of like try to like get Virgil away from him or something. Oh, I don't, I don't remember that. Far. I can't remember. Oh, or I know, I know Ryan saw somebody else. That probably was... the wrestler saw it happen. Before yeah, I yeah. Think. So uh, I, I think I, that's what like he. I think he kind of told him. I, I know. See, I know he told that girl that that's in TNA on Brooke, Brooke Adams or something. Yes, he told the story. So I, I suggested to Brian and uh, uh, to, Brian, to Ryan to Ryan and Bix to Ryan and Bixie Demon. I suggested they should have a T-shirt made saying. I gave Virgil twenty dollars, and all I got, uh, and all I got was an eight by ten. I didn't even get this dumb T-shirt. <laughs> so that was a fun little blast from the past yeah. I got from our dear friend Ryan. Yeah, that was a good show. Yes, we should do it again. <laughs> but now, but but our show back then, we used to get like tired at two hours and twenty minutes. <laughs> Now it's like everybody's doing like going beyond that. It's Except like, when we used to do it with with uh, blog talk radio because they cut off. Uh, yes, off of the remember <laughs> that was. I, I have not listened to those shows, but did they really cut them off? Like they would always cut us if, off, right? If we, if we, because I never, I never, I think the Lucha World, I never, the Simon stands, I never heard them. Because there was one where we were in the right in the middle of something interesting, and at two hours. Yeah, because because on talk show we would hang up and we'd still you would hang up and Bix they would still be talking Bix, yes yes Ryan and myself would still be talking yes like Bix would ask me about a bunch of the other stuff that I probably should have mentioned on this show either so. oh totally yeah if you want to hear those stories yeah. listen to the six oh five podcast it is a great podcast yeah. it's a marathon but it is a good marathon with our old friend David Bixton Span and the great Brian Last yeah highly recommended. Sorry. Listen to us first. Listen to us argue over Puebla. Yes. yes. <laughs> Soon we'll do this on video and we'll have a brawl in uh, Walnut Kills. Oh, yeah. Hold Street Wrestling what? is coming. And it's going to be. That would be hilarious if we actually did do that and we did fight on the street. That'd be great. <laughs> you, know, oh. you, know, you know, Dan, would, Dan and, and Bix and all these other people would want to be on that if we could figure out how to do video. Bix, yes. would, Bix would fly in just to like be the, the that would be bitching the person involved in this whole thing. Oh, that would be so. We cool. should actually do like a video cast, a vid cast, or whatever it's called, so people can see what, how we react when we're really angry. Because right now you can't do anything because you're holding that thing and you're you're restrained by the the and the the, the headphones. That's you true. can't do anything. We but could like, do the the old school thing where I get mad. Or the I, slam, or the slam and stand where you guys would do the podcast, and I would just walk out like, during the show, <laughs> grab a snack, and you guys. Are, I would come back, and you were still talking. And I was like, oh, <laughs> yeah. yeah we, we could do the really old school thing where uh, I get mad and I act like I'm gonna keep on on talking, but I take the microphone and I hit you over the head and you choose big time, and and we have to get the athletic commission. If involved. we really, if we really had the money, we'd do this a little more. Oh hell yeah! yeah. Oh, we'd go yeah. a lot. I would like to make what I'd like to do is I'd like to have a, a podcast where we sit around and talk about wrestling, but have uh, two bikini department house wrestlers just fighting all over the place while we're saying the news, and and we just sit there acting like they're kind of in the way, like you know. But you know, we don't do it. Other people end up that have oh, they money, will. They that will. have money end up doing yeah, all this they stuff. Will. They yeah, they will. I've already said it, so I bet, bet you somebody's going to do something along those lines. Well, I mean, look at Slam and Stand. That that I mm-hmm. thought that was like the weirdest show, 
And now you have all these other podcasts doing weird yeah. podcasts. Like, yeah. I, and every now and then I still get a request like, hey, are you guys going to do it again? <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah, not, not often, but I, every yeah. couple of months somebody says, well, yeah. It's practically Flam instead. I mean, half the Lucha World podcast, people listen to it. Like, half of it is like Lucha. Although we do talk, I think... The difference is we don't we don't stray talking about other wrestling like we did in Slam and Stand. That's true. That's true. This one we st- when we go off tangent, it's the same thing as we did it's in, in Slam and Stand. Lucha. But we still talk about lucha with an occasional Kelly family. Yes, family so we talk about all this other stuff. Yeah. Like I haven't <laughs> talked about documentaries or anything, but I watched the Tom Petty on um, Four Hour documentary on Netflix. Recommend. Which I, actually I recommend. Liked. I recommend everybody watch that. Also recommend watching. Um, there's this baseball one mm-hmm. about a minor league baseball um, that was owned by Bing Russell in Portland. I recommend that one. I don't remember the name, but it's on Netflix. You guys should check that out. Mm-hmm. Um, what else is there? Um, I think there was, that's about it. There's one I highly recommend that I noticed on your Netflix. Oh, Jocko. I started Jocko. watching Jocko. Uh, yeah. And there's one on, uh, there is a recent documentary on the career of the amazing Randy, James Randy, who is the famous uh, psychic debunker. Oh. It's... I was like expecting something worse. <laughs> no, okay. I expect the worst from you now, like... <laughs> this is a very, this is a very complex, fascinating documentary, and, and for those who don't know James Randy, he is somebody who has exposed so many fraudulent faith healers, psychics... Yeah. And uh, years ago, he uh, <clears throat> you know did a lot of the stage props for Alice Cooper. Like when Ad- Alice Cooper used to get beheaded by the guillotine, oh, he was the one who said uh, he was a magician. Uh-huh. And so, you know, he knew everything under the sun about magic. But uh, he also knew con artistry, and you know, one of his life, you know, one of his life's missions is to expose all the fraudulent people trying to make money off of. Uh, you know, vulnerable folks. So, um, I can't, and and just like that baseball documentary, I can't remember the title of it. <laughs> but James Randi last yeah. is in the last five years. It's yeah. so worth seeing. So much good documentaries out there. Yeah, that's why I don't watch all. The, I don't have to watch all the lucha. <laughs> yes, <laughs> all the yes. wrestling. I mean, lucha. I watch. I mean, lucha. You could you could actually skip a show, and there's so much other indie wrestling, mm-hmm. indie lucha that you can watch. That like I was saying, we were talking about the the AIW. I think it was AIW that that match where I was telling you that they were using the strap. Yes, like yes, that. really great match. All this other Lucha Underground I watch all the time. That's a great show. So yeah, there's so much good stuff yeah. out there now. You could skip. You don't have to watch it all. The, like all this other stuff. <laughs> I don't think you've watched Triple A in years. So. I haven't watched it. Yeah. I can't remember the last time I yeah. did. Uh, well, Triple Mania. Oh, that's right. We and did. And I'm trying to forget that I watched that. Yeah. yeah. That 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 was very surreal. Yeah. So this weekend, people watch Lucha. If you don't watch Lucha, watch documentary. <laughs> Absolutely, I or watch watch uh, Boardwalk Empire on Amazon Prime. If you have that, I haven't seen that, but I want to see it because I heard such good. It's things really about good. It. And um, Steve Buscemi's great on that. He's great, and if you don't want to do any of that, friend us on Facebook. Friend Kurt on Facebook. Don't friend me. Friend Vandal on <laughs> Facebook. I refuse. You to can friend. friend Kurt Brown, but it's going to be somebody yes. other than me. Uh, they, they friend the wrong. They were, that I don't want to say because then my friend's gonna get upset. That friend did the wrong Fredo Esparza. Remember? Oh, <laughs> yes. And I'm like, dude, that dude's like 20 years older than me. Come on. <laughs> he lived clear nearby though. So. Oh, that's funny. But I was just Los laughing. Los Fredos. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Which would make a great tag team name. For Absolutely. Anybody, anybody thinking of starting a new tag team? Fredo. There you go, Los, Los Fredos. Fredos. Yeah. Like Los Javier. Los Javier's. Mm. Uh, we, well, we had Los Danis when Dan Fair and Danny Wolf teamed up. Yeah, Los Los Javier was Javier Roca. Javier Roca was it? Javier Cruz. Javier Cruz and Javier um, Chamaco Valaguez. That was a great trio too. Eighty nine, nineteen eighty nine. I don't remember them. Chamaco Valaguez was awesome. It was good. I, I miss those days. Yeah, Javier. I miss that classic look of Real Luchador. I do too. I like, really do. And like I don't know. Maybe because I think because, like you were saying, there's so much wrestling that it's like you see all these guys. It's like. It all kind of just go flows together. You yeah. Know what I mean? Well, and it's also funny. I remember when I think it was when Rito Romero retired. He said one of the things he got burned out on was everybody's a wrestler, and I guess I, I get well. Then this might be a generational thing, but they say uh, you know where you used to have to really work hard to even get in the opener. 
now it's like they hand it out to people and uh-huh. I, I hear older guys saying the same thing about real, younger wrestlers now is yeah is this a, is this like the the exile on bad street chris zellner podcast that's pretty long we've never gone this long yeah it's long yeah i say we cut yeah we should yeah, we should cut the 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 non This is like part this is like a Chris Z podcast. Two hours, twenty three minutes, plus another hour. No, no, no. Uh, I'm counting combined. that other hour. Oh, yeah, shit. So. I'll probably edit it out. Yeah, edit it, please. <laughs> <laughs> it's, people are gonna be like, "This wasn't two hours, twenty three minutes. Why did you guys say that? It's only two hours and yeah. ten minutes." That's why, guys, we talked a lot of nonsense. Yeah. So we're gonna keep the fun nonsense in and edit. Well, you know, I'm super, I'm guessing there are podcasts that edit, and I think some of oh, them yeah. should because I think. Like like Conan's podcast has like a the one the MLW mm-hmm. they start the podcast before him and like I'm like why do you start the podcast without him just wait till he shows up <laughs> and start I recording that too yeah because there's like 15 minutes of them talking it's like and I, I come across hear a that. lot of podcasts where they do that or there's a lot of really dead air yeah. where I'm saying okay it's enough dead air where you should you guys just, just edit it out yeah, yeah I've yeah. done that for Slam and Stand. I used to do that a lot like when we would when I would actually when it would go really long yes yes. No, it's a good idea. That's I don't. Th- idea. I think I only did a few times. It wasn't that often. But, but no this problem. podcast, I do. I've done it more no, on this one. times this warranted. Yeah. So this won't be a two. This will be like a ninety-minute version of this a two-hour. Ninety-minute version, but just picture, just picture us. Uh, we've been sitting here for Four. almost two and a half hours. Uh, very upset at each yes, other. Yes, very upset at each other. Uh, we're gonna have an arm wrestling match. Yes. But neither of us will win, so we're going to have a psychic wrestling match. But James Randy will do a run in and say we're frauds. Yes. And we're saying we're not frauds, we're workers, damn it. I don't think I'm going to edit it out, actually. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think there is probably some split. I stuff say edit it. Well, I have to listen to that part where it cut off. Yeah. I'll, and I'll probably. And besides, ed- besides. I'll probably edit this part out. If those, those of you who are listening to this, if I don't edit this, apologies, because I, I probably was going to edit it out. Yes, but if you edit it out, I think it'll make it more fascinating because they'll wonder what that all that nonsense was <laughs> about. So, <laughs> yes. Keep the mystique going. Yeah. And thank you, folks, for coping with us, for putting up with us. And uh, until next time, how should I end this? It's okay, I'll just edit it. How much dead air should I put on? I'll edit in something that you said in the past. (laughs) (laughs) This is going to be the edited edition. This, yeah, this this is... This is feeling, this is, I think this fell apart when, after I gave the Matt Hardy story. Really, the Matt Hardy. So we blame Matt. Matt, Let's blame Matt Hardy. Hardy. We're going to blame Matt Hardy. Hardy. I'm using that picture. I'm actually going to use the Matt Hardy picture. Yes, do it, do it. Matt Hardy, you will rue the day you, you, you know, put Lucha World into chaos. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to put Matt Hardy and I'm going to put the Jordan meme on it. The Michael Jordan meme. Have you seen that? No, I haven't. It's his head. His tears are flowing out of my, Michael Jordan's eye. Oh. <laughs> That's a meme now. So I'm just going to add that to that. I'm going to add that to the Matt Hardy head. <laughs> That's going to be Okay, awesome. well, I'll land it with my, my, uh, with, uh, my version of Kubla Khan. In Xanadu did Killer Khan this bitch and treasure trove retrieve where out that bitch and river ran through taverns measureless to man into the sunny, sunny, sunny sea. Keep on rocking, folks. See you next time. <laughs>